Good morning, Comrade Chai. You look very cold this morning. Hey, it's very cold. Very, very cold in Cape Town. Yeah. <laughs> I know, so am I. It is cold. It is cold. Honorable members. Let me try to. I had to come to Parliament so early so that at least uh, there is no distraction between uh, our meeting. We mm. might link to to the study group. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Hey. Uh, maybe let's say uh, formally then open uh, the meeting. It's uh, nine o'clock. Um, good morning, honourable uh, members. Uh, good morning to the staff of the committee and the uh, staff of uh, parliament, Dr. Uh, um, Also, good morning to the DTIC, uh, led by uh, Dr. Vima Socha and the uh, other officials of the department, and uh, also our guests in the media. Uh, good morning. Um, Ms. Recording Barons, in progress. Uh, can we just get uh, the roll call? Uh, attendance and apologies. <clears throat> good morning. Um, good morning, Chair, and good morning, members and um, um, the department and stakeholders. Um, Chair, in attendance today, uh, from the side of members, we've got yourself, um, Honorable Dango, Honorable Moimang, Honorable Mashodi, Honorable Lansman. Um, I, I'm not sure if Ms. Um, Honorable Mamrahane has signed in because I see there's the Samsung SM and I think I'm not sure if that is her, um, but I'll check, I'll check with her. Um, in addition, we've got Honorable Boshoff. On the, we've I got think she's quite funny. Okay. Um, then we've got Honorable Mamrahane, and I'll just rename that as Honorable Mamrahane. Um, then we've also got um, Honorable Boshoff, Honorable Pratasev, Honorable Matabula. Um, we have no apologies from the side of members, but we do have an apology from my co-committee, um, Ms. Honorable Washoff. If I may come in through you, Chair, um, Honorable Lond will be a little late, but he will be joining. Thank you. Thank you so much. Chair, can I continue? Thanks, uh, thanks Honorable yes, Washoff. Okay. Yeah. Um, Chair, we don't have apologies from the side of... I see Mr. Moimang, Honorable Moimang's hand is up, Chi. Oh, okay. Honorable uh, Moimang. Thank you, Chair. Just clarity in terms of the meeting at uh, half past 12 uh, of, the, of the study group. Are we, are we going to be able to join that meeting? Just the clarity sitting question, Chair. Thank you. Okay. Um... I, I, I'm not sure because uh, we we were excused uh, from the from the meetings. Uh, I just assumed that even on that one we excused. Uh, I assume, but also Honorable Dan was send a WhatsApp message uh, requesting that we should take uh, a break uh, from half past uh, from half past one until half past two, uh, so that uh, two he can join. Uh, if, um, the plenary, and uh, then uh, uh, when we start again at half past uh, two, uh, it will it will be back uh, to the committee meeting. So it's something that uh, so <laughs> now if we break at half past twelve and then break again at uh, half past uh, one, uh, I think I suggest that uh, maybe we should be excused on the on the study group one as well and then we can just get a briefing later what's your view sir uh chairperson i do i have the challenges that i have to be in the plenary for the beginning for when the motions are being presented uh, yeah. as the as the provincial uh, uh, yes, I understand. But I'm suggesting that maybe we we continue until half past uh, one, and then reconvene at half two. Thank you, Chair. Is that, is that fine? Okay. okay. 
Um, Ms. Bartia, can you just say uh, also um, maybe rename uh, Honorable Mamarakhane and then and, and, and then continue because we're still on the floor? Um, we'll do, Chair, but I see Honorable Poshop's hand is up. Oh, okay. Honorable Poshop? Honorable Chair, let um, Maria finish and then I'll come in. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much. Okay, um, uh, thanks, Honorable Boshoff. Okay, then, Chi, um, like I said, there was no apologies from the side of members, but there is one apology from my co-committee secretary, Ms. Nizulu. Um, she's actually at the office today, um, just clicking for the um, sorting out the visas and the supporting documents for members. Um, also, from the colleague side, we've got Advocate Ali, Advocate Fana Merva, Advocate Gwenya, and my, um, our committee assistant, um, Mr. Bazir. Um, the rest of the support staff will be joining shortly, I'm sure. Okay, oh, thanks so much. Uh, Honorable Koshov. You can go ahead, uh, Honorable Koshov. Thank you very much, Honorable Chair, and morning to everybody. Chair, this is what happens when people are not consulted. Um, had we known that we were going to break we from the opposition parties could also have submitted motions because it's something that we hardly ever have an opportunity for. So had you consulted with us prior to this meeting, it would have been better. The letter that you sent to Honorable Nyambi, the House Chair, and the Chief Whip Muhai, on behalf of the entire committee was done without consultation, checking if it's in order. It was also not taken through the WIPS meeting. So no province or party was respected when this request was sent. So I'm asking you, and I want this minuted, that everything should be done through the committee. We cannot have a one-sided approach where one person writes and takes a decision on behalf of the full committee. I'm sure that Honourable... Bratiseth and Honourable Matavula feels the same and all the other opposition parties that serve on this committee, that we should have been consulted, that we should have been told that we're going to break and we would also have submitted motions. But it is very late at this stage to tell us that we will be breaking so that Honourable Dungwall can table a motion. Thank you very much, and I hope this is minuted. Uh, let me just correct that. that. Can I just can take can I just take uh, honorable team? Um please raise your hand if you want to say anything on the chat on the platform, please. Uh honorable uh, team. Thank you, Chairperson. Chairperson, I'd like to take it a bit further. I'd like to actually get a ruling on um on these arrangements. Um, the, the fact of the matter is, is that the committee was not consulted, um, that the action was unilateral on behalf of the chairs, and I'd like to find out if we can get a ruling as to whether that action was regular to, um, to consult with the chief whip and the house chair as to whether or not we could have a full day of um, committee without consulting the uh, without consulting the entire committee because the application clearly speaks that as a committee we request this not as members of the uh, the ANC delegation we request this and so could we please have our legal advisors give us an opinion as to whether or not the request for this uh, full day uh, committee schedule was actually regular in its in its uh, form and its content. Thank you. Thank you so much. Honorable uh, Msodi. Honorable Msodi, please go ahead. Okay, Honorable Dango. Correction, Chairperson. Uh, I am not presenting a motion in the plenary today. Let me just correct that. But as the provincial whip, and as I suppose as all other provincial whips, for the first 15 minutes, 
when motions are being presented and just in case we should be there. So I think uh, that is the issue. It is not that I'm presenting a motion. It is absolutely incorrect to say that I'm going to present the motion. It's not on the order paper and I'm not going to present a motion. Chairperson, on the second issue, Chairperson, there is the letter from the um, uh, from the secretary that we need to to deal with as to the voting. Can, can we no? Can we yeah. uh, finish this one, uh, uh, please, uh, Honorable Kamba uh, first, um, Honorable Mosoni. Uh, thank you very much, Honorable Chairperson. My view, Chairperson, on my side is that, as we know, as a committee today. We, we have a permission that we are going to work and st starting in the morning until uh, five o'clock. And we, we've got permission for that meeting. I was saying, Chairperson, maybe some of the issue that was raised here concerning the uh, uh, plenary, concerning the study group, that issues must be communicated somewhere, not in this platform because now we're starting to have a, a, a problem to say we are breaking in a, another time for study group. My view on the issue of study group, I don't think we can break for study group. We are going to brief. The only one that I don't want to dwell so much is this one of the whips, because my understanding on our Dumbo is a whip of housing. Other members, they have got their own Whips. So if there's nothing information from them, I think that issue, let's not entertain on this platform, Honorable Chairperson. That is only my issue. So that we can uh, start our meeting. Honorable Matula. Thank you very much, Chair. Um, on my side, I've got a question that I need to present today on today's sitting. So I'll be excused and then and that my, my, my motion and that stuff that I'm going to log in again to the meeting. Thank you, Chair. Okay. Before I come back to Honorable uh, also, let, let me explain this. We, we, we will be breaking for lunch, Honorable Members, from half past uh, uh, 12, sorry, from half past one until half past two. So, and we convene at half past two. So, if I I'm not going to get as to what the person does during the lunch break. Others may feel that they want to join the, the plenary at two. And, uh, but as long as it's half past uh, uh, two, when we reconvene, everybody will be then part of the, the committee. But we were going to break for lunch in any case, because uh, we're not going to go on until uh, five. We're going to break for lunch. But for convenience purposes, for those who have other engagement, then we, the suggestion was that we break at half past one uh, until half past two. Uh, we did the same uh, when we had a, a whole day meeting uh, uh, last time. Um, I think on the on the sixth uh, on the sixth of uh, April, we we. We had a break from half past one until half past two. So it's the same thing. We are having a break at half past one until half past two. If uh, others want to join a, a, a meeting uh, or have a food, uh, a meal, uh, it, it's up to those people. We're not going to be dictating to them what to do. It's just that uh, Honorable Dango up front said that uh, the, the issue of, uh, I mean, that he, he will use that time uh, for 15 minutes to be part of uh, uh, the, the meeting, but he, he will be doing that during the, the lunch break. The second issue on the thing, on the issue of uh, consultation, the rules of uh, 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 NCOP do allow the chairperson um, in the interest of the committee to take a, 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 a decision. But I was going to then uh, bring that, if you, if you look on the, uh, uh, in the rules, uh, rule 109, it, 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 it goes in detail in terms of the, 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 the role of the chairperson. Uh, chairperson can do take a, a decision uh, in, in, or even initiate a decision. But what I was going to do was to then 
bring it to the attention then of the so that it is formally then endorse the decision that I have taken. It doesn't stop chairperson from uh, exercising a uh, web practice. It is practically impossible to call a meeting. A chairperson can do that if you go to a, 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 a rule 101, you read, we read all the, the sections and the subsection under that day rule uh, 109. Uh, so I didn't do something that is uh, out of the rules. It is within the rules. Uh, but I was going to table then so that formally it, it, it is formalized uh, that uh, the meeting is, is, is going to be the whole day. Um, so I, I just wanted to clarify those two reports. Uh, Honorable Boshoff. Thank you very much, Chair. Um, thank you for briefing us on that, but had you consulted with us prior to agreeing to a lunch break at half past one, normally we break half past 12 or one o'clock, but we see the reason why we're breaking at half past one now. Um, and had you consulted this with us prior, we could have prepared for the plenary this afternoon, which wasn't done prior to this meeting. It's no use coming to the meeting with your section 109 or rule 109. Now you should have done it previously. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, I think the issue of uh, the, the, the plenary is something that uh, I did not even consider it because we were excused. So it's just a matter that came from uh, from Honorable uh, 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 Dango this morning. So I, I didn't even think that we were going to have anything to do with the with the with the, with the plenary. Um, I do, I'd like to then uh, apologize if uh, uh, people they think that uh, it, it was something that uh, has been arranged before. Uh, and Honorable uh, Musodi and the uh, Honorable uh, uh, Tim. Mine is an old head chair. Oh, sorry. Okay. Uh, Honorable uh, Tim. Chairperson, you're referring to a Rule 109B, which says that you may act on in any matter on behalf of and in the best interest of the committee or the subcommittee when it is not practical to arrange a meeting of the committee to or the subcommittee to discuss that matter. If that matter concerns a request to give evidence, any other request the committee or the subcommittee, the initiation of any steps or decisions necessary for the committee um, to perform its function and exercise its powers. Chairperson, I just want to know um, in whose interest we were, can you define in the best interest of the committee? Okay. Because and, and, it seems and, and to me that we, we're talking about it in the best interest of this legislation or the best interest of um, pushing through this legislation? What is the best interest of the committee? And that's why I'm just a bit confused, Chairperson, with, 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 with all respect. Okay. In my view, it is in the best interest of the committee that uh, because we have been dealing with this uh, uh, legislation, and we had uh, a legislat legislative uh, program uh, that uh, on the uh, it, it has all the steps. But I'll start from the 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 six. On the six, we were to engage with the legislation, um, uh, especially with regard to the responses to the negotiating mandates of uh, the provinces. Uh, on the six, the, the responses from the CLSO and the DTIC. And then on the 13th and, and the 20th, we're going to vote. And then, and therefore, we were of the view that by the 20th, we would have uh, finished uh, um, with, the, with the voting process. And then on the 25th of uh, July, because uh, we have requested uh, that we have a meeting on the 25th of July, and then we, we consider the e-list. Uh, uh, uh. Now, it is clear to me in terms of uh, my analysis what that we took 
uh, we we took a, a, a long time to to finish. Even on the on the thirteen itself, we could not finish uh, with the voting process. We had to to do again on the fourteen. We agreed that on the fourteen we must uh, meet. Uh, it was a meeting. In fact, it was not our slot. We requested that we have that slot uh, on the fourteen in the meeting that we, we had. Even then, we could not finish. But then, in my analysis, I was of the view that we may not finish if we start from uh, nine until say uh, half past twelve. We will not finish uh, checking the, the 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 how the process was taking place. And therefore, I, of the, I was of the view then, in the interest of the committee uh, to finish in terms of the legislative program, we should then uh, have a whole day uh, meeting. I then made a request, but it was not practical then to have a meeting to say uh, in a meeting, can we have a, meet, a whole day meeting? So then I use that, uh, that, that rule that you could do. And 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 uh, if you go further about the also the issue of the initiation, so that that was my interpretation. Uh, after having uh, analyzed that, uh, in two days we could not finish uh, the 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 legislation in terms of uh, the the program that uh, we agreed on, and 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 it was on those basis then that uh, I I decided that uh, in the best interest of the committee, we we should then. Uh, uh, have a whole day meeting, just like we had it in the interest of uh, 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 the committee, had whole day meeting when we were uh, considering, the, in fact, when we had the uh, uh, public hearings. Uh, yeah. Back to you, uh, Honorable Tim. Thank you, Chairperson. And I, I fully understand where you're coming from and the application of the rule. And my concern was is that. You said we were, we were just not practical to call a meeting. We, we were in meetings last week. Uh, why was uh, this issue not raised at the tail end of one of those meetings? Or did you only realize this problem after the termination of our meeting on the 13th? Did you only yes, realize, I agree. And, and the 14th, actually. Did you only realize we've got a problem then? Because I just think that if it had been raised on the 13th or the 14th when we were in a meeting, you could have discussed mm -hmm. it with us. So, did the realization only come later? Yes, I, I must. I must agree because uh, I, I did the reflection uh, after the meeting, uh, considering that uh, if we look at uh, starting from clause one, I think until clause uh, twenty-three, and uh, and when I check uh, the the document again uh, on my laptop. And checking the still what is left in terms of the issues that we are still considered, and then feel that uh, uh, today the three hours that we normally have uh, will not be enough. I agree fully with you that uh, my reflection were after the, the the meeting of the fourteenth. Um, that, that's when then I thought that the three hours won't be enough, and therefore we should uh, make a request for for for, for additional time. So I fully agree with you on that uh, aspect. Honorable team. Thank you, Chairperson. Thanks for the explanation. All right. Thank you so much. Honorable uh, Dan. And Chairperson. OK, thank you so much. Honorable uh, members, uh, let us uh, now give an opportunity to advocate uh, uh, Samar. Uh, on the issue of the procedure. Over to you, uh, Advocate Tamara. Thank you. Colleagues, um, Chairperson, there is an issue with regards to the outstanding procedural advice that was required um, last week. It has been prepared and distributed to members. Um, perhaps I can get your guidance as to whether you would want me to read through the advice um, with members or can we move to questions or um, issues of clarity that members would have um, on the matter. Um, we can then allow for deliberations in terms of the procedural uh, opinion. Um, thereafter, we can follow the procedure that we uh, had um, done last week with regards to the consideration of the clause by clause amendments on the two bills. 
Thank you, Chair. Okay, because it has been uh, circulated, uh, uh, I would suggest that if uh, members want to uh, ask questions for clarity, uh, they can uh, uh, do so. I will take hands. Um, honorable team, honorable Mama, um, in that order, please. On honorable Damu. Honorable team, Thank you me. go first. Thank you, Chairperson. I, I've read the opinion of Advocate Pindela, and I would really appreciate Advocate Shamara taking us through the opinion and just explaining to us to us uh, as she goes through it. Um, I find certain sections a bit confusing to me. Um, if, if possible, uh, I really would appreciate Advocate Shamara taking us through the through the document. It's only two pages long, so it shouldn't take too long. Thank you. Okay. All right. Can we agree with that, Chair Honorable Maimang and Honorable Dango? Agreed, Chairperson. Okay. Um, maybe then you'll come back later, uh, Honorable Maimang and Honorable Dango. Uh, see your hand up. Uh, Advocate uh, Samara, can you take us through? Please. Thank you, Chair. I'm just trying to share. Uh, Maria, could you perhaps assist with the sharing of the document? Thank you, Chair. Um, i briefly go through the background of the document. Um, it was an official request from the Select Committee on Trade and Industry, Economic Development, Small Business Development, Tourism, Employment and Labour, hereafter referred to as the committee. The concern that was raised by members of the committee during a meeting of the committee, wherein two members of the same provincial delegation voted on a question before the committee. The select committee had requested advice on the status quo of these votes. In addition, the committee sought clarity on the legitimacy of the votes cast by a member in the, if the vote is not in conformity with the provincial mandate. In answering these questions posed by the committee, we sought refuge in section 60, section 65 of the constitution and the Mandating Procedures Act. Um, honourable members will also notice that we haven't made mention of any of the rules in these in this advice because the constitution is our supreme law and when we have a conundrum as the one that we are faced with, we look to the constitution and its provisions um, in terms of uh, finding a solution. Um, Maja, can you go up please? In terms of the application, section 60 of the constitution um, states that the NCOP consists of a single delegation from each province consisting of 10 delegates. Further, Section 65 1A of the Constitution provides that, except where the Constitution provides otherwise, each province has one vote with a question being decided by a supporting vote of at least five provinces. When we refer to a situation of um, where, the, where the Constitution provides otherwise we're referring to section 75 votes where each and every member has an individual vote in terms of the advice the constitutional provi provisions referred to above provide for the composition of the ncop and the voting procedures within the ncop when dealing with bills affecting provinces in so far as questions of clarity is concerned the mandating procedures of provinces act Act number 52 of 2008, hereafter referred to as the Act, defines a mandate as an instrument that confers authority and prescribes how to vote on the provisions in an ordinary bill affecting provinces. These are your section 76 votes. In terms of section five of the Act, the authority to negotiate is conferred by a committee designated by a provincial legislature. In the circumstances of this case, the delegation has been mandated to support the bill. It has been disputed that the mandate, it has not been disputed that the mandate was properly, was improperly conferred, nor has it been alleged that it was improperly obtained. It has not been argued that the constitution provides in a different mode in that the bill should be um, voted in terms of section 75. It wouldn't because that would go against its provisions. The committee is therefore entitled to accept the act and act on this mandate. The mandate is binding on the delegation as a whole to the exclusive of the individual's views of 
um, views of the delegates. By way of completeness, each delegation has one vote, irrespective of who casts that vote, as long as it is uh, done in terms of the mandate conferred on the delegation. The delegation is bound by this discipline. Thank you. Jefferson, that brings us to the end of the opinion. Thank you so much. Um, I, I, let me come back then to Honorable uh, Team, followed by uh, Honorable Maiman, then Honorable Dango. Honorable Team. Thank you, Chairperson. Okay, so herein lies my difficulty. Um, I remember quite clearly last week our, our discussion on this because we had the situation where we had multiple. Um, well, let's just start with this. We had multiple delegates from two different provinces. We had two delegates from Limpopo and we had two delegates from the Eastern Cape. All of those delegates were allowed to vote. And also earlier on in the proceedings, I think it was Advocate Shamara, that said that every delegate could vote as they wanted to and not as per the mandate given by the province. So that's my first question. Um, and then also, so that's the first question. The second question is during the course of the voting, and we, we, we voted on a, num on a number of things, the definitions and then clauses right up, as you say, to clause 23. And on each of those occasions, we seem to follow a different procedure um, in terms of um, it was called out. Um, on Bochai for the Eastern Cape, um, and then, um, and then later on, it was uh, just honourable to Feni abstaining, or whatever the case may be, as as it was for uh, the Limpopo delegates as well. Honourable Matabulan, I think, honourable Mamarakhani, I think, I think, if I'm if I'm not mistaken, um, and and that went back and forth in terms of different different uh, formats. On on one vote, it would be for the province on other votes just in their name. So we were, we were vacillating between Section 76 voting style voting and Section 75 style vote. Now, I would like to go back in the record and go vote by vote and see which ones were improperly obtained or improperly voted on and which ones were properly voted on. Because the opinion says that we must vote by province. But in, in, in many instances, there was this confusion as to whether or not we were voting by province or whether we were voting individually, because it was called out for the record in some cases that we were just voting, um, especially the opposition parties were just abstaining, and that wasn't recorded as a vote for the province, but as just as a vote for the individual member, aka Section 75 type voting. And I think that's going to propose a fundamental problem later, should this matter be subject to any judicial scrutiny. And that's that's my problem. And then also the opinion that was given, I'm pretty sure, by Advocate Samara, Samara that we, we as, as delegates, were entitled to vote as if it was a Section 75 uh, discussion whereas this is a Section 76 discussion. And that is my concern. And my concern is that we need to literally go back and review, get the minutes and review every single vote and make sure that we've done it correctly. I just want to do this correctly, Che. And, um, <clears throat> and then basically re-vote on, on whatever voted we, on, on every, whatever section, sorry, whatever section of the bill it pertains to, that we re-vote correctly. And that effectively means that there can only be one vote for each province and not multiple votes for the uh, additional uh, delegates that we had in the provinces. Unless Advocate Shamar has got a different opinion, um, which, um, you know, and, 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 and then the other thing that concerns me as well is that <clears throat> the, the, the second to last paragraph of the opinion is fairly <clears throat> defensive in that it's, it goes down the line of not really an opinion, but it goes down the line of arguing for the process 
because, you know, I, I deal with a lot of legal matters myself, and it says, it, it, it uses language like, it has not been disputed that the mandate was properly conferred, nor, nor has it been alleged that it was improperly obtained. It has not been argued that the Constitution provides a different mode of voting. That's the kind of language you use when you when you when you're a defendant in a case, and the you're arguing that the applicant hasn't proved their case. Um, this was not a legal matter. the The DA who requested this particular ruling was not. We were not in a judicial matter where we were having to prove our case. There was no burden of proof or onus of proof on us. Uh, it was just merely asking for an advice. And it just seems to me that Advocate Padilla's paragraph there. Is quite defensive of the process, and that always makes me a bit nervous because a, a, an opinion is supposed to be, <clears throat> um, you know, simply that an opinion, uh, not not particularly arguing one side of the of, of the matter or the other. So, chairperson, I'm very very concerned that <clears throat> whether whether just by omission or by commission, I, I think it was more by omission that when we went through the votes on during the course of the day on the 13th. There may have been certain votes, perhaps not the majority, but I think a significant number that were recorded incorrectly, simply because we allowed, in some instances, Section 76 style voting, and in other instances, Section 75 style voting. And I think the way it should be, according to this, is that there is only nine votes a cost, but in many instances, 11 votes were cost. And remember, an abstention is, a, is, a, is, is not just a, a standing back. An abstention is recognized as casting a vote. That concerns me greatly. And I think it would imperil the bull if we were to just simply proceed now, because it would open the bull up to legal scrutiny for the first, <clears throat> all the votes and the definitions, and then right up to clause 23. That is my great concern at this point. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, uh, um, maybe before I give to Thank you, Chair. my mark. Oh, okay. Go ahead, Honorable uh, Mark, and then followed by Honorable Dambo, and then we uh, ask it and uh, uh, advocate Samara to come back. Over to you, Honorable uh, Mark. Thank you, Chair. Allow me to, to, to express my. my uh, Appreciation to the to the advice uh, given by uh, by the uh, by the advocate and presented by Advocate uh, Samara uh, in relation to the issue uh, that was correctly captured uh, under the under paragraph one, the background, uh, and uh, and secondly. Uh, uh, for the uh, the correct identification of the of the loss that is applicable to the to, to, to the issue at the hand that was raised by the opposition, and, and thirdly, chair the the application as correctly captured uh, both under under paragraph three and four, they affirm the uh, the, uh, the the view that the committee had. Uh, there's no confusion, uh, Chair, in terms of uh, the issues that we're dealing with. Uh, we're quite clear uh, in terms of uh, uh, the, the law in relation to, to the role that uh, provinces plays in relation to, to the uh, Section 76 matter. There was never confusion uh, from our side. In fact, uh, even uh, Advocate Samara did indicate and advise us in terms of uh, what is the law, uh, uh, how that matter has been applied consistently by the NCOP. The confusion is, man is, is, is manufactured share. Uh, we knew and it was appreciated that uh, the opposition members were expressing an opinion. They were not voting. It was the head of the delegation that voted towards the majority party. So there cannot be any confusion in terms of how the process started up to that far. And therefore, my proposal chair is that let's move forward. This delaying tactics on the part of uh, what is being said is merely to delay us from moving forward, Chair. Thank you. 
Honorable Dango. <coughs> Chairperson, I've largely been covered by Honorable Moima <coughs> in his response. Uh, we did point out in the meetings that that was the process and that was ignored uh, to the extent that the, oh, it was almost uh, at times a bit difficult to express an opinion because it was then said, that's your opinion, let's get the legal opinion uh, on the matter. Having said that, Chairperson, Honorable Tim now raises another matter. And this matter is whether this bill, if it's uh, other, uh, up, uh, going to court, will, will uh, stand up to it. And with that, we have to revisit uh, the entire process. Then, pro Chairperson, I would suggest that we now consult one another and take Friday the whole day to redo the process. Today and Friday the whole day to redo the whole process. But this is giving a new meaning to filibustering. Filibustering normally is when people speak throughout. This is serial filibustering. We understand where the opposition comes from, that they don't want this ball to go through. Um, so it is quite clear that if this is filibustering to stop this bill and to take uh, and to set the precedent for a legal case. Thank you very much, Chairperson. Thank you very much. Uh, I'll come back to Honorable. Uh... Sir, I'll come back to uh, Advocate Samara. Let me go to Honorable Matibula, uh, Honorable uh, Musodi, and again uh, Honorable Tim. And then after that, uh, we go to uh, Advocate Samara. Honorable uh, Matibula. Thank you very much, Chair. Maybe I'll wait for Advocate uh, Samara to advise us based on. For example, if we in the previous vote, we didn't uh, vote very well, I would like to know whether we're still going to go back and re-vote again or what method are we going to use to go forward, Chair. Thank you. Thank you so much. Honorable uh, Masori. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Honorable Chairperson. Chairperson, I concur with the sentiments that were raised by Honorable Miman and Honorable Dango. Because my view, Chairperson, this issue was clearly explained by advocate from the onset. We give him the task. He she go and do the task and he come back to me to us as members again. I think, Chairperson, in short, we are not going to allow this delayed tactics that my is my view now. Let's go on, Chairperson. I point out Honorable Nimang and Honorable Dang. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Honorable Tim. You know, Chairperson, um, look, I, I, I do understand where Honorable Moimong and Honorable Dangle are coming from, accusing me of filibustering, but there's something I've learned in life is that if you want to do something wrong, you'll have to do it two or three times. But if you do it right the first time, you do it once. And honestly, what I'm concerned about is, is as a member of parliament, I'm concerned about doing my job properly. And I'm concerned that if... No one in this in this in this meeting can honestly or can confidently say that every can confidently just recall if, if you can recall definition by definition, clause by clause, subsection of sub of clauses by subsection clause that we voted correctly on every single one of them, then I will take my hat off to you. If you can actually recite them now, I would I would re really be impressed and you'd have my undying respect for the rest of my life. But the problem is, is that there were instances where we voted as individuals. There were instances where we voted as provinces. Um, I raised this personally myself that are we voting as provinces or are we voting as individuals? And then halfway through the process, it was corrected. And um, my dear was calling it out that for the province, this, for the province, this, she was naming the member and the province. And I agree Advocate Pendele set out the correct procedure. There's no argument with that. I don't have an argument other than the defensive nature of the opinion. I don't have an argument with the way he set out how we should vote. My concern is that we may not have voted correctly. And all I'm asking for is not that we restart the process, but that we have a review on the record of how we voted in each one. Perhaps we can come. We we can we can carry on to try to try and be 
as, as you say, progressive chairperson. We carry on with the voting today, but we circle back to the work we've done and we just do a review, a review, a review of each vote up to there, identify any, any, any votes that were recorded. Not, I'm not saying that anybody acted improperly in this meeting. Please don't get me wrong. I don't believe that anybody tried to willingly act improperly, but we may have acted incorrectly um, by, by, by mistake, let's call it that. That we just circle back to those and say, have, are we certain that we've passed every single um, particular section and definition correctly? And if we have, fine. If we haven't, let's just circle back to those and just make sure we do them correctly. Simply because do we want a situation where we pass a piece of legislation and literally, when it appears in the court papers, because chairperson, we know that this legislation is going to be hotly contested. There are a lot of significant players in this particular field, and that this this legislation will be contested down the line. This legislation might become the, the matter of contestation long after our time. And do we want to be called up in the in the record of the court that it was actually the committee that didn't pass this correctly? or didn't pass this particular clause correctly. So all I'm saying is, can we possibly circle back in the interim, we have the staff or, or, the, or the legal advisors look at what we've done and come back to us and say, okay, the following five were not done correctly. Let's just quickly go and do them again, just to make sure that we've dotted the I's and we've crossed the T's. That's all I'm asking for, Chair. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Honourable Tim. Honourable... Good morning, Chair. Good morning, everybody. Uh, apologies for slightly joining late, but I I got what uh, Honourable Browder said has said there, Chair, and I I fully support. I mean, there's a there is a concern that we we might have tripped over ourselves, and this is something that uh, we need to make sure that we do not make any mistakes. Um, so that is a plea that we please do that. Um, in the meantime, we can, in fact, get it in writing if you have not asked it yet, but get all the decisions that was taken in writing before we send it to any provinces so that we make sure that there's nothing that we send to provinces that's not correctly communicated from our side. Uh, hold on. Uh, Advocate Samara, uh, if you can uh, maybe also address the, the proposal of uh, Honorable uh, Bratasset and Honorable Lund. Uh, in your responses, and then I'll come back to uh, Honorable Matteo because she said that she wanted to further hear what you're going to say. Thank, okay, you, Chair. Thank you, Chair. Chair, if you can recall, when we had the meeting last Wednesday, the question was posed, and I had very clearly said to members that we're voting per provinces. This is a Section seven, uh, 65 bill. Each province has one vote. In terms of the way we voted, Honorable Matibula, as well as Honorable Tafeni, had indicated that they had strong views in terms of what they wanted to be noted uh, with regards to the provisions of the amendment bill together with um, the bill that's before the committee. The rules make provision for such views to be recorded within the report. We are not saying that Honorable Tafeni, they did vote, but when Ms. Solomons called out the vote, she would say Honorable Chai, Eastern Cape, Honorable Mamarhani, Limpopo, and so on and so forth. When it came to the votes against, it was, the, um, uh, sorry, when it came to the votes for, um, against the bill, uh, the proposed amendments, as well as the abstentions, Ms. Solomons followed the same procedure. So although we noted the name of the member that voted, by no means are we allowing for individual members to vote uh, in their capacity. It is voting per provinces. So when it comes to Honorable Tafeni and Honorable Matevula, their views were noted, but they, they did not vote in the sense, strictly speaking, in the sense of uh, um, having a vote per province. It was merely their views being noted. Um, Chairperson, I would like clarity from the committee, um, especially Honorable Brotherset, 
um, under, uh, Honorable Brodersit together with uh, Honorable Bosha. In terms of the voting, um, are they now perhaps saying that we should go back and look at the votes um, wherein they voted contrary to the mandate? Because we have those instances on record and we can uh, make that available to the committee. Um, do they want those instances reviewed because we did say last week very clearly that each province votes as per the mandate each delegate will vote is um per the provisions of the mandate however members still professed to abstain from the vote so the are members perhaps saying that they want us to review these votes or are they willing to change the votes um in terms of those provisions um, to going back to Ms. Matibula, I think I've already answered that question in that um, the two members from the EFF did not vote, but they did make their views known and it would be captured in, in the minutes together with the report. Our rules in terms of um, Rule 178 does make provision. It's uh, specifically 178 Part 2 F. Um, thank you, Chair. Thank you so much. I, I think what uh, Honorable Brother uh, said uh, and the uh, Honorable Lundi, if I understand uh, them well, was that uh, uh, there could have been instances where, in terms of recording, uh, Ms. Solomon would, would uh, uh, call out uh, names of those who have uh, voted for or abstain or against instead of uh, uh, calling a name in instead of calling a province. And then later on, then I think uh, Honorable Dango uh, indicated that uh, she should uh, mention the province as well. Uh, she made mention of uh, himself as an example, that Honorable Dango have them. Um, so if my understanding, if I understand uh, well, is that uh, there, there were instances there where she called out names without uh, mentioning uh, the, the provinces. I think that's what uh, they are indicating. And, there, and therefore, the proposal from Honorable uh, Dr. said, uh, supported by Honorable Lord, is that you go back to those uh, 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 clauses where the names were called out uh, without mentioning the provinces, and that then should be uh, uh, corrected. That that is a proposal there uh, that is being made. Okay, can I come back to you now, uh, uh, Honorable Lord, and then I'll go back to uh, Ms. Solomon, and then Honorable, I mean Advocate Chamara, uh, if uh, that clarification I was trying to make is correct. Honorable Lord, thank you, Chair. But just also, um, and I I trust we're on the same page with this. There's also instances where colleagues from. Um, Cutting from the governing party voted against the mandate that was submitted from the province. And that is the clarity that we've been asking because Honorable Bratisit and Honorable Sonia now, sorry, Honorable Borsov and Honorable Bratisit, they've now both been um, voting in certain ways that uh, might not always agree with the provincial mandate. Now, um, it has been pointed out that that's not 100% correct, but there's also been cases of um, the governing party members going against that. And that's why we ask that we please just make sure we go through everything, we don't miss anything, we don't make any mistakes, um, so that uh, when this goes forth to the provinces, we uh, make sure that we communicate correctly to them. Also, you agree with what uh, Samara's understanding is there. Uh, Ms. Solomon? Thank you, Chi. Chi, if I can just indicate um, that the minutes for the 13th and the 14th of June are both ready. They were finalized yesterday. Um, they were not circulated to members pending the outcome of the decision of the committee in terms of how to deal with the votes from Limpopo and the Eastern Cape. Can I make a proposal, Chi? Can we adopt the minutes um, of the 13th and the 14th, and then members can also see in the minutes how these votes were captured. And the members will see in the minutes that when it comes to close by close voting, voting was captured per province. I made it very clear last week when we were capturing the votes 
Honourable, for example, Honourable Wimang for the Northern Cape. It was very clear based on the procedural advice from Advocate Ali that when it comes to voting, we're voting Section 76 per province. So can I make that proposal, Chief? Okay, let's hear Honourable Wimang. Chairperson, uh, my proposal is that we need to move forward now. It's almost an hour that we have been discussing this matter. And can we proceed, Chair? <laughs> Thank you. Because Thank the matter so has much. clearly been canvassed, clearly been uh, clarified. The law is, 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 is categorical. Is categorical. Uh, so let's move forward. Okay. I love the team. Chairperson, you know, I understand Honourable Moimong just wants to move ahead regardless, and uh, but frankly, I'm, I'm surprised as, as a person of legal training that he feels that we should just gloss over what is, what is quite possibly very problematic. Um, <clears throat> I would like to formally request that we get the minutes and that we be given some time to go through the minutes and then we reconvene to discuss the minutes. Because to rush through it <clears throat> vote by vote... <clears throat> In, in the way that I'm sure Honourable Moirimong would like us to do, would be irregular. And I'd just like to ask that the minutes are circulated to us and then we adjourn for until, let's say, either half past 10 or quarter to 11 and then reconvene to go through the minutes so that we've had a proper look at them. I just believe that that would be the correct way to do it, Chairperson. You, you, you're welcome to obviously push it through as the Chair, but that will be noted in the long run. Thank you very much, Chair. Thank you very much. Honourable Lange. Yeah, Chair, um, from the suggestion of that Honourable Solomon's made, and firstly, thanks for the staff that got all the documentation and the minutes ready. I think that's a, that's a good suggestion, and uh, I do support that we get the minutes as she suggested, and also support what Honourable Browder said, has said, that we get an opportunity to go through it so that we are all comfortable and on the same page um, moving forward. And, uh, I mean, that's two long days, so I, I support that we get, you can decide 45 minutes to an hour to go through it and then we can um, adopt that and move on. Then we're all on the same page. Thank you, Chair. Um, I concur what Honourable Bratisette and Honourable Lant have suggested. Thank you. Honourable Dango. Chairperson, um, I think as people are setting the precedent to go to court, we need to be careful and actually follow the rules as it, it may be. I would then suggest that if we, can, if we can't conclude this matter today, that we have a full day on Friday to deal with this matter, uh, to conclude this. So the bill is not fully busted to a point where, in fact, uh, uh, it, uh, it can't be proceeded with. Thank you. Right. Sorry, Chair, we can't hear you. Just this, uh, honorable members. Yeah. Can we? Yeah, the, 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 the next close. Okay. Uh, we we continue with the. Chairperson, uh, uh, okay. there was a disconnection. Right. Can you just switch off your video and then start again? Oh, uh, okay. I've switched off uh, my video. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yes, yes sure. We can hear you. Oh, okay. I was suggesting that uh, let's continue with the with the voting process because uh, the next clauses are not uh, in doubt because we have yet uh, uh, started with them, and then. Uh, minutes can be circulated in the meantime. We we finish then with the the with with the process of uh, of voting, and then once we're done with the with the, all the, the the clauses that we're still going to deal with, uh, in terms of the procedure that was outlined by uh, uh, Advocate Shamara Ali, we we continue in in, in that uh, with with regard to that uh, process of and procedure. And then we we then go back to the minutes and see if there are any discrepancies uh, within the minute. Minutes can be circulated. 
we, we can, if we have time, we, 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 we will do that today. Uh, but if we don't have time, we take the suggestion as proposed by uh, Honorable uh, uh, Dango that then we reconvene on Friday to consider uh, the, the minutes and, and also see whether we, we voted in line with the procedures in terms of uh, the, 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 the other clauses uh, that we've already dealt with. Can, can we agree you know, with regard to that uh, uh, suggestion Sorry. that I'm, so, I'm putting Sorry. forward? Sorry, that was Jefferson. not... Jefferson, I raise my hands. It's Honorable Mishud. Yes, Honorable Mishud. Thank you very much, Honorable Jefferson. I concur with your ruling to say let's go on to vote for this uh, uh, clause to, by clause as we, we started uh, the past two weeks, Jefferson. I think, to be honest, we are wasting our time of some of the things that was raising. Okay. Honorable, uh, I, I, I think it was Honorable Launch. Yeah, Chair, just um, your proposal, Honorable Dango's one, is different, and it's also different to the one that Honorable Browder said to myself and Honorable Walsh has made. The request was we only asked for an hour um, to adjourn, go through the minutes. Um, I mean, Honorable Solomon has said everything is ready, so it can be sent to us. So that's all we ask for, for an hour to get it. Um, some of us have a lot of other programs on Friday as well. Um, we can't just last minute change the things. That, that's also what the issue was that I asked in the group. How you can just, on behalf of everybody, without checking our availability, um, make bookings for our day. Because we have to move meetings around. And uh, if we're going to make further changes, then at least allow us to... We adjust our diaries. We don't just sit around and wait for someone to make a call and all jump on that. So uh, there was a reasonable request for an hour adjournment. There was another request that we adjourn for the day and meet on Friday. But we can't just hang around, hang in the air, and uh, think everybody's just sitting waiting to do this one task only. We've got a whole range of other activities, commitments, and obligations that we need to meet as well. So there were two clear suggestions, um, but we can't just do somewhere in the middle because that just doesn't show respect to us at all as the members to get our diary sorted as well. Can I, can I ask members to, to lower their hands so that we vote on the proposal of uh, Honorable uh, uh, Protestant? Honorable Chapman said, Yes. It's Mama Mama yeah. yes. Before before we go to before you we go there, let, I just wanted uh, to support what Honorable uh, uh, Mushodi uh, just said that uh, we we continue with the meeting. We continue with the meeting because the, it's not that it's not that uh, we we have lost time because okay. the discussion amongst that. They were right. So let's let's continue with the meeting. I thank you very much. All right. Okay. okay. Can you please lower your hand, Honorable uh, Mamakha? Honorable Chair, my hand was up. Yes, I'm, I'm going to come back to you, Honorable uh, uh, Lansman. Uh, I just want us uh, to, to solve this issue. There's a proposal, a, a proposal uh, uh, that was made by Honorable uh, uh, Protestant and uh, follow, uh, supported by Honorable. Uh, uh, Lonten on our uh, Boshop. Um, I want us to take that uh, proposal to vote. Those who vote in favor of that uh, proposal by Honorable Boshop, that we break for uh, for for one hour, consider the minutes, and then there's a proposal by uh, which I suggested that we we continue and consider uh, the minutes later. Uh, or if we don't have time on Friday, let's start with this one of uh, Honorable Protestant. Those who, who support uh, the proposal of Honorable Protestant, please raise your hand. Ms. Martia Solomons. 
ESG, um, those members that have supported Honorable Brautuset's um, suggestion, we've got Honorable Lant, Honorable Poshoff, Honorable Matavula, and Honorable Brautuset. Okay. Can you please lower your hand, Honorable members? Honorable Matavula, please lower your hand. Those who are voting against the proposal, oh, Honorable Matavula. Okay. Those who vote against the proposal uh, to adjourn for one hour and uh, um, sorry. Yes, G. Um, in terms of the voting, it's been captured as followed. Um, the, those against, um, Honorable Moimang, Honorable Mushodi, Honorable Dango, Honorable Mamarahania. Honorable Lansman and Honorable Hai. Okay. your hands, please, uh, honorable members. Those who are abstaining, please uh, raise your hand. No. So there's not. Can we then uh, come to the proposal that uh, we continue with the meeting, uh, the close by close, and then we uh, we ask uh, Ms. Solomon to circulate the minutes now, and then if we have uh, time, we can consider the minutes later. But if we don't have time, we consider uh, on Friday, and therefore we we'll need to have a meeting on Friday to consider the minutes. Can those who agree, with, please raise their hand. Okay, uh, Chief, those in agreement, it's um, Honorable Dango, Honorable Lansman, Honorable Moimang, Honorable Hai, and Honorable Mamarhana, and Honorable Mashuri. Thank you very much. Can you please lower your hand, Honorable Members? Those who are voting against uh, that proposal, please uh, raise your hand. Um, Chair, those members that have um, voted against is Honorable Lant, Honorable Bradusef, Honorable Matabula, and Honorable Boshoff. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, please lower your hands, uh, Honorable Members. Honorable Boshoff, please. Okay, thank you so much. I not remember the decision that we continue with the close by close and we consider the minutes at the end of the meeting or on Friday. We come to that decision when uh, at five, because we, we're finishing at five. Um, I think that in, I will request uh, Ms. Solomon if you can uh, fly to the document. Uh, that will there's be there's a hand up, Honorable Chair. Yes, ma'am. Sorry. Uh, honorable uh, Pasha, is, is that your hand? Yeah. No, it was it's Honorable like, Launch. Oh, hand oh, that honorable Launch. Oh, Honorable Launch. Yeah, Chair. Um, I just want to put it now on the record that I raised the concern about the manner in which members of this committee is treated. Um, complete and utter disregard and disrespect for our diaries, the programs we're trying to run in our provinces, in our constituencies, the provinces that we do represent in the NCOP. Um, and uh, the way this is now just being pushed through, um, the ANC using the numbers to push through legislation that is problematic instead of trying to make sure that we meet 
um, all the requirements. We're making sure that we don't make any missteps. And now again, just uh, going on, same as today, without any consultation at all. Uh, maybe you caucused it as an ANC caucus, but there was no respect shown at all to even if you have a courtesy WhatsApp or call to any opposition member and say, listen, are you available? Now it's happening again. I raised it at the beginning saying that uh, it's full diaries back to back for the entire week. Now, it's, again, it's disrespect shown to you. So this is an ongoing trend with this legislation. It has been like this from the beginning. And uh, it is not how it is supposed to work in, in the NCOP. So... Um, just want to put it on record, Chair, so that uh, everybody is well aware and also aware of what did happen or did not happen behind the scenes by pushing this through with uh, scant regard for, for any um, other voices outside of the ANC. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Lund. If I may respond, uh, Honorable Lund, nobody knew that we were going to be, because the proposal came from a uh, Honorable Brother said that we must go back and check which clause did we not uh, put uh, correctly on. Nobody knew, even from the ANC, that we would have uh, such a proposal. So there's no way that that proposal could have been caught because nobody even knew that there was such a, 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 a proposal that was going to come that uh, let's go back and check if we, if we voted correctly. It's a matter that is part of the discussion now in the committee. That was suggested by uh, Honorable uh, uh, Dango. So nobody caucus on that, because nobody knew that uh, Honorable Brother said was going to, to make that suggestion, uh, that let's go back to the then Honorable, uh, sorry, Ms. Solomon then came with the idea uh, of uh, flighting the minutes. And then it was suggested that uh, uh, we should break for one hour. And then the, there's, a, there's a contrary view uh, that has been uh, subjected uh, to a democratic process. So nobody caucus on that. Uh, I just want to clarify, nobody's been undermined, uh, but we, we are here uh, from Monday to Friday, I mean, from Tuesday to Friday. Those are, uh, are, are committee days. So a meeting can be called on any of those days. Uh, from Tuesday to Friday. So there's nothing that is undermining. Co constituency is on Mondays. The constituency day is on Monday. So uh, Friday is a, is, 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 is a parliament, parliamentary day. So there's nothing that is undermining any uh, uh, party or individual in terms of what has been done. It's a democratic process uh, that, that we, we have just agreed to. So we continue then with uh, uh, clause 24. And uh, as just Jay, it's, it's select, a selective reasoning that you're making now, because I'm talking about even for today, where there was a scheduled plenary and you decided not to consult anyone. You just posted on our group that it has changed. So, I mean, it's, it's all good and well if you want to selectively argue for it, um, which you can do. I mean, you have the power of the chairmanship. But uh, you have all of our numbers. Um, nothing would have prevented you from uh, contacting any of us. We changed our programs again for today. I do not argue with you that there is work that gets done um, from Tuesdays to Fridays. But uh, what I do argue with you is that we leave our diaries open for the whims of whoever to call us into meetings. We have full diaries planned all the time. And, and that's where I think you missed the point, Chair. Honorable Lonti, you arrived late. We sorted out the issue of uh, why the meeting was requested to continue until five. So I'm not going to go back to that now because we clarified and the, the meeting was clarified uh, before you arrived. Thank you very much. Uh, close 24. Um, Honorable uh, Chair. Yes, ma'am. Sorry for the interjection. My hand is up. Oh, sorry. I'm using a. a Another device, so I'm struggling to see. Okay, Honorable Boshoff, followed by Honorable Tim. Um, just check your international study tour. Um, Grace has just posted that the committee took a decision to go on Friday for the visas. So please keep this in mind. Thank you. Yes. All right. I'll do that uh, when we 
uh, at five when we finish the meeting, then we'll have a, a debate, a discussion on that. Honorable Tim. No, I'm covered, Chair. Sorry, that was just breaking news. I thought I'd bring it to your attention. Thank you. All right, thank you so much. Uh, Advocate Samin, final member, commissioned work, section 21. Good morning, Chair, and good morning to the members. Um, Chair, in respect of uh, Clause 24, uh, Section 21 deals with commissioned work, and mainly the, the proposal from Gauteng was that um, the, the current regime that the Act um, sets up should rather be retained um, and not the new proposed one in the Bill. And then there was also a proposal um, from the, the Northwest in respect of a concern in granting the tribunal licenses, a license to, um, to, to um, set up the, the, the relationship between the parties. Um, what I would can contribute, and, and I think then the rest would be for the department to respond to because it is, is a policy matter, um, is just that the tribunal's role is very limited in the bill. And it is specifically to address instances where work has been commissioned, but it's not used as it was agreed or um, or used at all. And um, then just to protect the author's rights in respect of that. Um, so the, the, commission, the, the tribunal's role is not to interfere in the relationship um, when, when things go according to, to what was agreed. Um, it is only when things are not going as it was agreed that the bill then provides a role for the tribunal. And um, the submission would be that that is a fair process because it will allow the, the both parties to put their case before the tribunal. And then, Chair, through you, if I can hand to the department to speak to the policy um, because from their side, the proposed amendments are not recommended. Um, so, so if I can hand to, to them. Thank you, Chi. Thank you so much, uh, uh, Advocate. Um, Dr. Thomas Socha, over to you. Thank you, Chairperson. Good morning, Chair. Good morning, Honourable Members. Good morning, Advocates, Good morning. colleagues from the DTIC and the legal um, services, as well as parliamentary staff and members of the public. Um, Chairperson and, mem and Honourable Members, the Commission works uh, provisions were, were extensively debated in the parliamentary process, and they are informed by the challenges that um, authors um, have experienced when it comes to their rights on commissioned works. Um, the, one of the rationale that informed some of the provisions were informed by um, the broad, public broadcaster uh, where there were complaints that there are certain works that authors um, do not have access to. They are locked and um, there are challenges when they need to access some of the uh, of the of those works, so there there are implications that were raised, including on how the the contracting takes place between parties, that affected um, the need for policy intervention around the importance of an agreement when it comes to commission works, the importance of access to the works um, when uh, they have to be uh, further consumption of that of that usage, and in terms of the. The, the role of the tribunal, uh, as indicated by the advocate, it's limited in terms of when the work is not used and or when it's used for other purposes that other than what it was intended for. And the intention of the whole provision is to ensure that there is protection uh, for the authors and also that there is a framework that governs how commission work applies. And we see the changes as uh, bringing more protection and clarity, certainty in terms of the law when it comes to commission works. And therefore, the proposal to um, amend it or to put any pro uh, uh, provisions around it, we recommend that it not be considered. We think that uh, with what is existing in the in the in the bill, there will be allowances and more rights for parties involved in the processes of commission works. Thank you. Thank you so much. Honorable uh, members, we now have to vote those who vote in favor of uh, the suggestion of the input of uh, uh, DTIC. 
and uh, as explained also by uh, advocate. Yes, ma'am. Yes, the, oh, sorry, uh, honorable uh, uh, professor. <laughs> Don't worry, Chair. I understand, Chairperson. It's difficult to follow the hands when you're looking at a document on the screen. Chairperson, I've got a bit of a conundrum, um, and I'm hoping that Advocate Shamara can help me. If I look at the KZN mandate, um, the KZN mandate says that in general they support the bill subject to the amendments proposed in the committee report. And then if you look at the committee report, it basically just reports on all the inputs given by the during the public participation process, but it doesn't actually say we propose the following amendments. So I'm at a bit of a loss from my point of view as to now that the voting procedure has been clarified as to how I vote, because it doesn't appear that KZN's actually taken a, a stance on anything. Uh, they've okay. kind of copped out. They've, they've, they've referred to proposed amendments, but then they don't list the proposed amendments. Can we just get some advice from Advocate Tamara as, as to what my position is there? Thank okay. you. Thank you so much. Yeah. I just want to do, you know, given our conversation this morning, Chairperson, I'd like to just make sure we do this right from now on. Thanks. Thanks so much. Uh, I'm not aware of Advocate Samara. Thank you, Chairperson. Um, in terms of the care, uh, mandate from the provincial legislature, um, the KZM provincial legislature, it is problematic um, in the sense that Honourable Member um, Broto said is correct. It does not clearly indicate um, the provisions in terms of the amendments that's been proposed by the legislature. Um, however, the Honourable Member still needs to toe the line. If the mandate clearly indicates that the legislature supports the bill, in essence, they would agree to any proposals or amendments that will come from this negotiating procedure, which means the honorable member should be voting in favor of the proposed amendments. Thank you, Chairperson. Thank you, thank you. Okay, honorable team. Sorry, Chair, I, I'm not fully bashing. I have to come back there because the 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 mandate, negotiating mandate says, agreed to mandate the KwaZulu Natal delegates to support the copyright amendment bill with the following proposed amendments as outlined in the committee report attached here too, <clears throat> but then doesn't tell me which amendments those are. So those amendments could be to clause 24, which we're talking about right now. So, you know, um, how do I know that? How do I, this is literally the blind leading the blind. Now, I'm sorry, I'm not going to be led by a blind person. <laughs> and I'll say that jokingly. But, you know, um, surely my right position here, I, I, I can't toe a line that might lead me off the edge of a cliff. I may be doing something completely wrong. So I, I thank you, Advocate Shamar, but I think your, your advice is quite cavalier. Um, I, I need to have a clear idea as to where I'm going. Thank you, Chairperson. Thank you so much. Let's take all the hands uh, before we go back to uh, Advocate Summer. Sorry, um, Chair, may I, may I come in? Oh, okay. Chair, may I inquire from the Honourable Member as to whether um, he had followed up with the legislature on the legitimacy of this mandate, whether that was queried? If you can recall in our um, advice earlier on, we had inquired as to whether the validity of this mandate was questioned from an administrative side, we as a staff did query the provisions of the mandate. I just want a bit of clarity as to whether the Honourable Broderset has brought this uh, issue to the attention of the legislature. Perhaps the situation could have been curtailed before we got to the meeting. Thank you. Honourable T. Chairperson, I, I, I noticed that Advocate Shamar is getting into what about to read now. Um, would she like to quote the rule that compels me to do that? Because now we're getting into a legal dispute. So if we want to go down that road, can the, can the advocate Shamara quote the legal rule that compels me to actually, in fact, try and remedy the defect in a committee decision taken by a legislature? Where is the rule that compels me to do that? If we're going to go down this road, let's start getting into that. Uh before I take hands, uh, Advocate Samara. Honorable Chairperson, 
Honorable Brota said, there is no such rule that mandates you to do so. However, in terms of administrative justice and ensuring that the, the document has been given its due diligence, I would have thought that an, an, a, a diligent member like yourself would have inquired in terms of the provisions of the mandate. It was just a, a query on my side. Thank you, Honorable Chair and Honorable Members. Okay. Can we take hands? I will come back to uh, Honorable uh, Tim, Honorable Launch, Honorable Mimang, Honorable Boshoff. Please. Thank you, Chair. I'm coming back to the first response from uh, um, Advocate Shamara Ali that uh, delegates should toe the provincial line. Now, this comes back to my previous question and comment, and also what Honorable Bratha said has raised that uh, if my memory serves me correct, there's been several instances of, I think, one Fao Ting, definitely, that did not vote according to their provincial mandate. And uh, that then means that, based on what um, Advocate uh, Shamar Ali has said, that uh, those delegates from Gauteng are now acting, I want to say legally, but definitely outside of what they were mandated to do, and which calls into question this entire process. And now we're going to go down this road, trying to go through the rest, and we haven't resolved those ones or read uh, th those issues. Now, there's definitely been issue cases from my recollection that uh, members have voted against the mandate, which, as Advocate uh, Alina said, is not correct. And uh, we need to get that cleared up, Chair, please. Um, and hence why our earlier proposal to get this sorted before we move on and like we've made several other proposals that's just been ignored and later on it's come back and now um, bitten us. So if we can get that cleared up, we'd really appreciate that. Honorable my mom. Again, again, again Chair, uh, the, uh, the, the matter under discussion now is just the, another, 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 uh, entry of delaying us to move forward. Uh, with the uh, presentation of the mandate of the meeting that we had uh, in, uh, in, in, in Plain Street, provinces were quite clear that they support to their certain issues that they were raising. Uh, and even the, in terms of the, the uh, uh, presentation that was made, we knew from those presentations that eight provinces are supporting the bill, but there are a number of areas that they were raising. So there is no confusion. I think the confusion is that uh, members do not want us to proceed forward. Thank you, Chair. Can we move forward, please, Chair? Okay. Let's I move forward, Chair. Oh, Honorable, Honorable Landsman. My hand has been up for a long, Chair, and you noted me, but Sorry. you never... Sorry for that. Chair. Sorry for that. I explain I'm covered, Chair. I support what Honorable Kenny was saying. Okay. Honorable Bosho. Thank you very much, Chair. I have been covered by Honorable Lon, but I want to say to Honorable Moemang, nobody's trying to delay anything. We are just following the rule of law. Now, if you have a look at Mpumalanga, it also says that it confers on the permanent delegate to negotiate in favor of the bill with amendments as proposed below. Now, the am amendments are stipulated in this um, conferment, but it hasn't been sent back to them to say A, B, C, D, E after we discuss the amendments, et cetera, et cetera, to see whether the provinces then still remain in favor or against the bill. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Honorable Pursoff. Honorable uh, Tim? You know, Chairperson, you know, Chairperson, trust me, I'm, I'm not trying to delay this, but I've really got a conundrum here because the mandate, it, the mandate looks like a final mandate, which we know it isn't. It's a negotiating mandate. And it yeah. specifically refers to, an advocate tomorrow said it is problematic. <clears throat> now, because it refers to 
subject to the following amendments and then doesn't list the amendments. So that leave really mm -hmm. leaves me in a position as a delegate from KZN as to I don't know what I'm voting for. And so therefore, Chairperson, I'm going to have to abstain on everything. But the problem is, Chairperson, is that could be seen as voting against the delegate, the, 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 the mandate given to me. But effectively, it's a defective mandate. And Advocate Shamara touched on that. It's a problematic mandate. So that's all the guidance I'm asking for. I'm being asked to vote on a, on a defective, problematic mandate. And so therefore, the only way out for me is to continue the process. And the only reason I'm raising the now, Chairperson, because I think we did it incorrectly last week. So I'm trying to make sure we do it correctly now. Is I'm going to have to abstain on everything because my province has not given me a proper mandate. It's given me a defective mandate. It's given me no specific, I don't know which clause to look out for. And then Advocate tomorrow says I should have gone and spoken to them. Well, if that committee that had no participation with took a particular position, a defective mandate, they would hardly change their position simply because Tim Bradis had came along and told them to change it. They would, probably very similar to this committee, just say, sorry, we're voting against you. These are defective mandates. So, Chairperson, I'm, I'm left in a position where I can't, I can't support, or go, support or vote against anything in this particular bill because of this defective mandate. And I just, I certainly hope that all the other problems that are correct matter. But we're still left with a position, Chairperson, where for the entire, this entire process on both bills, I could be voting incorrectly, and that could possibly be um, uh, seen as defective going, for, going forward. So the, the obvious, you know, I know that everybody's going to shut that I'm delaying again. The obvious, um, way around this is to go back to the provinces formally and say, look, you've given us a defective mandate. Please give us a proper negotiating mandate, and then your representative can vote accordingly. But that's that's the problem I have, Chairperson. And please, you know, advocate tomorrow, you know, I've also got legal training. When when people, when you ask for a specific rule and they can't quote that and then start referring to the rules of administrative justice and the rules of natural justice, in legal parlance, that basically means you're just searching for an answer. You don't actually have a specific answer on anything. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Honourable Tim. Honourable Long. Thank you, Chairperson. So, Chairperson, just on what uh, yourself have said, also Advocate Shamara Ali, and also Honourable Browder said, is that uh, you remember when we had our in-person meeting, um, and I said it tongue-in-cheek, but I did say it, so I'll point back to it. How think supported the mandate, and I'm using that now as an example, but with so many concerns, so many provisions, so many edits, that I said at that stage, they might as well not have supported it. And again, I'm coming back to it, that Gauteng has now time and time again voted against the negotiating mandate that they were given. And therefore, the delegates from Gauteng are acting outside of the mandate. And if it's originally now the advice was given to tow the line, and now suddenly Gauteng continues to not tow the line that they have been given, um, they are acting outside of it. And now there's this problem with Honorable Browter said as well. Honorable Bortov has raised hers, has raised hers as well. And the critical thing that's still being uh, kind of skimmed over, um, we touched on it last week as well. The... Um, Impact assessment, the socioeconomic impact assessment, that or the report, sorry, um, that had to be sent to provinces, but the department decided not to send it to any province. Only one province asked for it. And then that report only speaks to the impact on government, not on industry. Now, provinces send mandates with... Uh, well, they sent the mandates. Now the delegates here has to carry it in. But they're also doing this without the full picture that they were supposed to get from the department, which makes this thing a massive, massive issue. And again, the plea, Chair, let's just pause. Let's get our ducks in a row and then continue and not make a fatal mistake here. Okay, Honorable Lansman, my end was up. Okay, Honorable Lansman. Thank you, Chair. 
Myself, I believe that we have been discussing this thing a number of times. You have even asked us to vote on the matter. You are now opening it again, Chair, over and over again to discuss the same issues we have been discussing from the morning. It can't be. We have voted on this matter. Can we please go on and move forward and vote? Okay, let's give to Honorable Kenny and then uh, my mom, and then I'll give to to Samara, and then we we, we move along. Yes, Chair, no. Chair, I think uh, Honorable Lansman has correctly captured to the point that I wanted to raise. The real of the matter is that, Chair, we had an in-person meeting. Uh, we know provinces have clearly categorically stated that they are in favor of the bill, but there are certain issues that they raise as part and parcel of negotiating. But in principle, they support the bill. We have resolved on the procedure. If there are any issues that members are raising, we will deal with them on Friday. Thank you, Chair. All right, thanks so much. Samara, you are the last, then we continue on voting for uh, Clause 24, Section 21. Yeah, just one point um, with regards to the mandate from KZN. We, had, as administrators, have spoken to our counterparts um, in the legislature, and we were... Uh, what was confirmed was that the mandate as is still stands and the legislature will not review it. Thank you. Thank you so much. Honourable members, can we then vote? Those in favour? Do you think, Chairperson, they're not going to review a defective mandate, which leaves me voting on a defective mandate and I refuse to do so. Thank you, Chairperson. Thank you so much. Those Chair who are voting in favour, please uh, raise your hand. Yes, sir. We are voting now. Please. please uh, Yes, Chairperson, I agree we're voting now. Please cannot allow any person to interact when we have other process to do. You okay. said you must vote. Honorable King just came in. All right, no more voting. I'm very yes. sorry. No more, no more interruptions. I am very sorry. Honorable Mashodi and Honorable Lansman are not the chairs. And this is a democratic process and everybody should be allowed to voice their opinions. And I concur with Honourable Brata Seth. I will go according to my own um, take on it, as I also see it as a defective mandate. Thank you. I'm not denying Honourable Bosha for what I was saying. I was saying, Honourable Member. Honourable members, members, can you, can you please, uh, when you want to speak, uh, please raise your hand. We're now voting. Can, can we focus on voting now, please, uh, Honourable Member? Uh, Ms. Solomon? Um, <clears throat> uh, thank you, Chief Person. Um, Chi, in terms of the acceptance of the CLSO and DTIC responses, um, we have um, for um, Free State Honorable Mashori, for Lopopo Honorable Mamarhane, for, Lans for Northwest Honorable Lans Lansman, for Northern Cape Honorable Mwemang, for Eastern Cape Honorable High and for Gauteng Honorable Dango. Thank you so much. And we lower our hands. Those who are voting against, please raise your hand. Chair, um, can I just get some clarity, please? No, voting now, please, uh, Honorable uh, Lord. It's regarding the vote, Chair. No, we can't uh, be discussing the vote now. Uh, that's what is called a division. So there's no discussion on the uh, voting. Let's well, do that after. Well, then you won't be able to count my vote for anything because I need clarity. So uh, you're actually forcing me not to vote on any of this. Those who are voting against? Okay. Those who... Voting, well, those who are abstaining, please raise your hand. Chair, abstention with caption. Yes, um, Chair, abstention with caption as follows. Um, Honorable Matavola for KZN, Honorable Bratasef, and for Pumalanga, Honorable Washoff. Thank you so much. So the clause 24 is then carried. Um, thank you so much. K 
Can we then move to the next uh, clause? Jesse, you're still ignoring me. No, I thought that you, you put your position. So if you can you learn to come back, because I said after the vote, then uh, you said uh, we won't be voting. So if you want to, to raise something, then I, I, I allow you to do so. Well, Chair, this is, comes back to uh, what um, Advocate uh, Alia said, that uh, there's been quite clear that the Western Cape does not support this uh, flawed and badly written legislation. Um, and uh, there's also been quite clear that none of the inputs that's given from the Western Cape or the other provinces are actually being considered um, by the department or the legal advisors. Um, and they've said it on a few times, they do not want to consider it because that means that uh, the process might be delayed. So this all speaks to steam rolling something through. So if I'm not allowed to vote in any other way than the province, as Advocate Ali has said, if I'm not allowed to, to apply my mind as this, as uh, she has said, um, in the same way, not a single other provincial delegate may do that. They must vote strictly according to what um, that province has mandated. And again, we've now... Um, I'll point it out when we get to the next one, where a province was supposed to not vote for it, like Gauteng now, I think. Um, but Gauteng then ignored their mandate. So uh, you, we must apply the rules fairly across the board. Um, because if I have to go according to my mandate, then I have to go no on every single vote going forward. Obviously, there's flawed um Mandates received from other provinces, which would force some of the members to rather play safe and abstain because of this flawed. But then there's people vote like this one now, when Gauteng didn't vote correctly. Um, and all of this is going to come back, Chair. And uh, unfortunately, you're going to be the face of the committee that uh, didn't do this correctly. I'm not at the honorable launch. Uh, advocate, uh... Charmaine, uh, if I remember, on uh, section 20, or clause 25, section 22, uh, reversion. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Um, Chair, the proposals here um, are from Gauteng relating to um, collective management organizations, and, and the department will speak to that. Um, the other then is um, also, also from Gauteng in the respect of the 25-year limitation indicating that um, it should be um, deleted. Um, so this also from Limpopo to, to say that um, in respect of the reversion right, um, and as well as Mpumalanga. So if I may, may hand to the department, because all of these relate to policy uh, decisions and not to, to legal questions. Thank you, Jane. Thank you so much. Uh, Dr. Masucha. Thank you, Chair. In terms of the comment on the um, collecting management organization and the beneficiary assignment, we were not clear about that comment, but then our understanding was that it might be informed by uh, foreign jurisdiction um, legislation because we refer to collecting societies in the South African context. And also the beneficiary assignment is not defined in the act. So we 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 think that um, the, the 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 comment or the submission could have been clarified further, but it is not clear what in terms of the context of that. Uh, but noting also the terminologies and the fact that it may not fit in our legislative uh, framework as it is currently. And on the reversion uh, right uh, policy, the the, the 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 provision was informed by the Copyright Review Commission report that, that was commissioned by the department, and um, it recommended that this uh, be provided for from a policy point of view. The reason being that um, there has been challenges with the assignments um, of of right, especially for uh, when it comes to literary or musical works where authors um, previously signed off their rights unawares in some context. And um, the research found or the commission found that uh, 25 years is a sufficient time for the investment to be recouped after it has been, um, after the, the work has been assigned. And so 
we are of the view that the policy is not unique to South Africa and that um, it's something that will assist with uh, le leveling the playing field for authors as well as uh, right holders uh, in terms of them uh, being able to have access to the works that they have signed off. And, and not only that, in terms of uh, having a framework that uh, manages this uh, approach in terms of contractual arrangements over time. So we have the view that um, there should not be any amendments in this provision and that um, we think that the policy will make a difference in the South African context, uh, ensuring that there are those rights that are provided by this particular provision. So recommendations to delete it and also to say that um, as it is, it does not, um, it's, it's, it is not properly applied. We think that it has been well thought, it has been informed properly as well and well debated in the processes in parliament. So we think that it should be retained. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much. Uh, Honorable members, sorry, uh, made a mistake. Can we go back to clause 24? Um, Okay, we have uh, voted uh, uh, for uh, section 21 in terms of what is in the bill, uh, but we have not uh, voted for the clause as a whole. Can we please uh, vote for the uh, vote on the on, on clause 24? Those uh, voting in favor of uh, adoption of clause uh, 24, please raise your hand. Chair, um, may I proceed? Yes, please. Chair, um, um, those provinces that have voted for Clause 24, we have Northwest, we have Northern Cape, we've got Limpopo, we've got Free State, and we've got Eastern Cape. Thank you so much. And I remember, sir, let's please uh, uh, lower our heads. Thank you so much. Those who are voting against the adoption of clause 24. Ms. Madia. Uchi, we have one on the Western Cape. Uh, two, um, are, are these, um, are these provinces voting against clause 24? I just want to clarify that, Chi. Yes, the, the, the vote is against. Uh, Chair, just to clarify, I voted for, but I didn't get my record. Oh, uh, we'll Chairperson, take, I think... sorry. Chairperson, yes, my apologies. I had a dip in signal there. Are we on the against or the abstain vote? Sorry, my uh, apologies. We are on against. We are on okay. against. Thank yes. you, Chairperson. Okay. Um, okay. Ms. Simmons? Yes, she against. We have the Western Cape. Okay. Honorable Lund, please uh, lower your hand. Ooh, ooh. Okay. Thank you so much. Those who are abstaining, please uh, raise your hand. Solomon. Um, three abstentions. We have um, Pumalanga, we've got KZN, and we note the abstention of Andrew Matabula. Thank you so much. Please lower your hands, honorable members. Thank you so much. Uh, we go back to uh, clause 25. It's already been explained. Um, Okay, uh, those who vote in favor of uh, section 22 and close uh, uh, five in terms of the bill, please raise your hand. Uh, 
Yes, yes, sir, Max. Yes, G. Um, G, those pro provinces that they voted in favor of Clause 25, we have the Northern Cape, the Free State, the Limpopo, Eastern Cape, um, Gauteng, and Northwest. Uh, thank you very much. Please lower your hand, honorable members. Uh, those who are voting against, uh, please raise your hand. Solomon? Yes, she. Um, we have the Western Cape against. Okay. Uh, please lower your hand, uh, Honorable Blunt. Thank you very much. Those who are abstaining, please uh, raise your hand. Um, she abstentions are captured as follows um, Pumalanga, KZN, and from Andhra Matavula. Thank you so much. Please lower your hands on our members. I'm, I'm, I'm abstain. Okay, it's and not changing. Um, Honorable Tafini's abstention as well. Okay. You can lower your hand, uh, Honorable Tafini. Lower your hand, please, uh, Honorable Tafeni. Your hand has been noted. Okay. Honorable members, we now vote on clause 25. Those who are voting for the adoption of clause 25, please uh, raise your hand. And, uh, oh, Ms. Solomons. Yes, Chair, those provinces that they voted in, in, in favor of Clause 25 is Northern Cape, Free State, Gauteng, Northwest, Eastern Cape, and Limpopo. Thank you so much. Any honorable members, please lower your hand. Those who are voting against, please raise your hand. Chair, against, we have the Western Cape. Thank you so much. And I'll reload it and please lower your hand. Thank you so much. Those who are abstaining, please raise your hand. Um, G abstentions are captured as follows. Um, Pumalanga plays it in, and we note the abstentions from Honorable Matavula. Um, I don't see any other abstentions. I think Honorable Tafeni is trying to communicate. Honorable Tafeni? Okay. Let's please lower our hands, uh, Honorable Members. Thank you so much. Uh, can we then move to the next clause? Clause 26 of NWEX, section 22A. Please go on. Okay, that's it. Yes, thanks so much. Uh, advocate. Uh, Th thank you, Chairperson. Um, Chair, in respect of, of the Orphan Works, um, section 22A and clause 26. Um, Gauteng was concerned about the whole re um, the whole setup, the whole practice, how it will work. Um, from KZN, um, they they felt that the definition um, should not proceed; that that was not correct. Um, Pumalanga supported and in, in indicating that you need to have this kind of um, um, exception. Uh, Northern Cape was concerned that um, it will not be, um, it, or rather that it, that it must be per sector. And, and that is, in fact, what the bill provides for. And it is a specific sectors that it, that it is applicable to. And um, from the Northwest, they um, also rec um, looked at the definition of orphan words. They were concerned about that. Um, from the Western Cape to propose that the words cannot reasonably identified be added to the definition of, of um, orphan works. Um, Jay, this is all of this, these matters relate to policy. So, if I may hand over to the department uh, to speak to this, thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Advocate um, Dr. Masuchan. 
Thank you, Chairperson. In terms of the orphan works, uh, these are the works where the um, the copyright owner is not uh, able to be located or um, they cannot be found. And then the works is affected in terms of um, its, um, its location. And these are important works because um, one may want to, an author or, or, or a, a rights owner may want to have access to these works, but then because of the fact that they they cannot have access to the to the the, the, the person who is the owner of that works, then the work then becomes misplaced and it cannot be identified. And so they are important because of the creative process where let's say I have a um, I would like to um, have access to the lyrics of a song. Um, and um, but then I cannot have I can't find the person or the owner of that work. It affects the the creative process. It affects the work that could be created that could even contribute to the creative processes as well as the economy. So there is there are implications. So these are not just works. They are important because of how they can impact uh, further creation, further um, works that could be generated by uh, or inspired from these works. So the bill currently provides a framework for these types of work uh, to ensure that there is that uh, process to identify uh, their locations, their owners, and also the remuneration process that can be included uh, for the uh, way they could, they are, they are, there are mechanisms for searching the works, mechanism for ensuring they are right, the rights holders get uh, remunerated including the role of the regulator in facilitating some of the processes. We think that we need a process of this nature um, and that um, it will make a difference in terms of the currently those works that cannot be identified uh, or, the, or the owners who cannot be identified around those works. And we think that we it should be, we recommend that it be, it be retained in the, in the bill. Um, it's not a South African uh, concept the other um, other countries have these uh, provisions. They also have um, search facilities. They also have licensing around them and issues of remunerations are involved as well. UK is one of the examples. Uh, there are other jurisdictions as well. And so we support that this provision be retained and that we think it will assist. It will be uh, the first of its kind, but it will make a difference in terms of the uh, supporting the works in the creative industry. Thank you, Chair. Thank you so much. Uh, honorable members, we're now voting for uh, section 22A on orphan works as per the bill. Um, those in favor, please uh, raise your hand. Chairperson, sorry, can I get some clarity, please, before this vote? Yes, yes, sir. Uh, Chairperson, please, uh, once again, I'm not trying to delay things. Advocate for Namuga referred to the KZN position on this particular clause. Um, can she just, maybe she's got a document I don't have because the documents I have before me from KZN didn't express an opinion as uh, Advocate Ali confirmed earlier. Maybe I'm missing a document and I'm genuinely asking if she has a document where it sets mm -hmm. out support for this particular section that would be very useful to me uh, unless she's she's just referring to the submissions made to the committee the KZN committee i don't know if advocate can just help with that i, I think so. it, it says that it is advanced by other interested parties at the new section 22a of what they do is that today putting uh, the the position of uh, the the stakeholders, not necessarily the position of the committee. Or oh, maybe let me leave it to advocate. Uh, yeah. So, Chairperson, uh, I think we should be very careful with our with our terminology. Then, um, advocate must not ascribe the input of stakeholders at public participation to the views of the committee. They are two very distinct things. If we can just be careful with the, with the language we use. Thank you, Chairperson. Advocate. Thank you, Chair. Um, Chair, yeah, look, I think everyone agrees that the, the mandates were quite different from what we normally see. And in trying to make sure that we do not miss anything that came from the provinces, because in their mandates they would refer to the public submissions, 
Um, so, so what we have done is to try and draw everything and make sure that that we have that. So, it is unfortunate that the 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 it's the the intention is not to say that this is necessarily what Kuzuli Natal is saying, but the Kuzuli Natal um, reference or the Gauteng reference or the Pumalanga reference is just to indicate that this is what we were able to draw from their mandates to make sure that we do not um, miss anything. Um, in these in these responses, um, so yeah, so so you can see from the from the wording how it is advanced in um, that the, the the new it's it's other interested parties indicating that the new section should be rejected. Um, uh, Jim, when I when I read out, I try and just summarize because there was already an opportunity for the mandates to be read out. So I'm I'm trying to not redo that exercise. But everything that is listed here comes from the totality of the mandates, which in other words also includes what they refer to, namely the submissions. Thank you, Jim. Thank you so much. Um, and I remember, as next time, what, what I'll do is uh, before we vote, we after the advocate and uh, Dr. Masocha have uh, uh, made their input, I will ask uh, for clarification so that we 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 don't get clarification in the middle of uh, voting. Um, can I gain uh, those who vote in favor of uh, Section Twenty Two A? Uh, close 26, please uh, raise their hands. Um, Ms. Ma Ms. Uh, Richie, um, we're voting in terms of acceptance of the CLSO and DPIC responses, and then also in terms of, and then we still need to vote in terms of the actual clause 26. Am I correct? Yeah, clause 20. Yes. We're voting so, for so, 72A, but we'll come back to and vote for clause 26. Yes, so um, those provinces that have voted in acceptance of the CLSO, CLSO and DTIC responses, um, those members and provinces is um, for um, the Free States, Honorable Mashori, for the Northwest is Honorable Lansman, for the Northern Cape it's Honorable Muimang, for the Eastern Cape it's Honorable Hai, for Gauteng it's Honorable Dango, and for Limpopo it's Honorable Mamarahani. Thank you so much. Honorable members, please uh, lower your hand. Thank you. Those who are voting against uh, Section 22A, please raise your hand. Three against. We've got one from um, from Honorable Lund for the Western Cape. Thank you so much. Honorable Lund, please uh, lower your hand. Thank you. Those who are abstaining, please raise your hand. Three abstentions. We have um, Honorable Bashop for Mpumalanga, Honorable Brautasef for KZN, and Honorable Matavula. Thanks so much. Please uh, lower your hands, Honorable members. Thank you. And we're now voting on, it, on clause 26, Honorable members. Uh, okay. Uh, clarity from. My hands. My hands. Why are you not counting my hands? No. Please raise. My hand must... is up for abstaining, chair. No, it was not up. I was also watching. Ah, oh, it's not funny. It's a mistake. It wasn't okay. Possible. I'm okay. abstaining. It's supposed to be noted. Uh, your hand will be noted on the attention. But uh, next time, uh, please raise it uh, on the on the device. But if you if you can't, then you must uh, shout. Uh, whether you're abstaining or voting for or against, if if you can uh, raise it uh, through the device. Uh, honorable Chief. Chief Person, sorry, I'm just trying to get my timing right. I'd just like to ask Advocate uh, from the Mover a question, but we can do it after this vote if you'd prefer. But I just want to get a, a bit of clarity, not about the specific vote, but about something else. Um, would you like to do it after this vote or can I ask the question now, Chief Person? Let's do it after this vote, 26. Okay. Okay, Jefferson, thank you. All right, thanks. Uh, another lance, man? No, Chair, I was voting. You have asked for those in favor. Oh, okay. Those in favor of close 26, please raise your hands.
Um, the three, those provinces that have voted in favor of clause 26, we have the Northwest, Free State, Limpopo, Gauteng, Northern Cape, and Eastern Cape. Thank you so much. Let's lower our hands, honorable members, please. Those who are voting against, please raise your hand. The tree against is captured as follows, the Western Cape. Okay. Please raise, uh, lower your hand, Honorable uh, Launch. Thank you. Those who are abstaining, please raise your hand. Um, three abstentions are captured as follows, um, Pumalanga and KZN, and then we note the abstentions from Honorable Tafini and Honorable Matavula. Thank you so much. Please lower your hand, not to members. So, person, can I, handle, uh, can I kindly request a five minutes break? Okay, just after that clarity of uh, Honorable team, and then we will uh, take five minutes break. Thank you, sir. Uh, over. Okay, thanks. Over to you, uh, Honorable Team. Thanks, Chairperson. I just wanted to get clarity from Advocate von der I, I, I could have asked earlier, but I, I, I wanted to respect your vote process. Um, can Ad Advocate von der just confirm that she, in the absence of a clear mandate from a province, she is actually drawing inferences from the engagement with stakeholders via the public participation process? Can she just confirm that that's what she actually said, um, that, that, that that's what their process has been? So in the absence of a clear mandate, which is absent in the case of KZN, they are drawing inferences from the engagement with stakeholders. Can I just get clarity on that, please? Thank you. Thank you so much. Advocate Faname. Chair, I think it's a question. Is, is, I don't think this question, Chairperson, is correct uh, to put that question to to advocate. No, let, let's give a, 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 a okay, uh, honorable team. Let's, let's allow a, let's allow advocate to to respond. Yeah. Okay, if I may explain, what I did was the the KZN's negotiating mandate indicates. Uh, the Portfolio Committee on Economic Development and Tourism met on Saturday 13 May and agreed to mandate the Kwazulu Natal delegation to support the Copyright Amendment Bill with the following proposed amendments as outlined in the committee report attached year to. I then went to the committee report and up until page 33, it deals with um, submissions that were received. From page 34, it then starts with uh, a seemingly analysis of what happened. So it says it is clear from written submissions that there are opposing views, and then it goes on and it specifically says, this report attempts to cover the issues raised in the written submissions under broad topics or policy themes. I have then taken as per that report, because that is the only thing I could find that indicated a view of the case in legislature. So the, the rationale for including it here, and I understand um, that it is difficult for the delegate from KZN to, to vote on that because there is no clear decision from the, from the province on, on whether they support or whether it is just an analysis. Um, but from our side, we thought it was important because the, the legislature referred to this report that we include where they made an analysis and, and then accepting that the, the issues raised were the ones that they felt were uh, worthy of being raised by them as a province. And it was on that basis that we have included it. So it's not, it was not so much an assumption as that we looked at the report and tried to analyze the report that they provided. Thank you, Chair. Thank you so much. Um, can we take a, a five minute break? I will come back to you if you still want to make a follow up uh, on our team and then we move to close uh, 27. Five minutes break, uh, uh, time now is uh, uh, 11.08. Uh, so we'll be back at uh, what 11.13. Thank you so much.
Okay, uh, honorable members, um, are we back? We are honorable back, Jay. Thank you. Uh, honorable team, I promise to come back to you. If uh, you no, are. Look, Chairperson, I just want to say that I understand Advocate Van der Merwe's difficulty, um, and she's now forced to draw inferences on um, from effectively defective uh, mandates. So I do understand her difficulty, and I appreciate that, and I thank her. Thank you. All right. Thanks so much. Uh, Ms. Solomon, or Mr. Bazia, can you uh, fly to the document again? <laughs> Okay, we are now on uh, uh, clause 27, um, chapter 1A, collecting uh, societies. Uh, advocate, okay. Thank you. Thank you, Chairperson. Chair, so, so what, we, what we received on, on this chapter um, was mainly support for a more strict regime for collecting societies. Um, so that 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 is what came through from from mandates from the reports from the submissions to them. There was a request from the Northern Cape for a performance tribunal, and the department will speak to that. Um, there was also um, a concern about royalties and how to deal, you know, how this will work with um, social media and streaming platforms. The department will also respond to that. Jane, if I may, because the chapter has a number of sections, but um, there's only two two sections that that received some inputs um, on on section 22C, which is part of this this chapter, so a part of this clause. There was a suggestion from Harting that the clause simply read that remittance of the royalties um, is subject to a reasonable and valid agreement between a foreign CMO, collecting management organization, and a local one. The department will also speak to that. And then from Harting, there was also a suggestion for rewording subsection 5 of section 22 if related to um, a suspension or cancellation of a collecting management organization. So, Chair, those, those were kind of, of, of they the, the were support, concerns, how will, will things work, and then um, the, the proposals from Halting on 22C and 22F. And if I may then hand to the department to speak to those, uh, because all of those are, are policy related. From our side, we just confirmed that the bill does, in fact, provide a, a much more strict regime for collecting societies. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, uh, Pete. Uh, Dr. Masuda. Thank you, Chair, and thank you, Advocate. In terms of the collecting societies, um, provision chapter, the chapter on this we 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 have considered the submissions from the provinces and um, we agree that the, the 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 framework that is in the in the bill it's uh, it, it it's tr it's it strengthens the regulation of collecting societies there has been uh, in the past many challenges raised related to the governance the management and the rolling out of how the collecting societies are, are dealt with uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. And the need to ensure that the regulator is given certain rights and powers to be able to uh, accredit these collecting so societies to make sure that there is order in terms of how um, funds are being managed and, and, and the reporting and the governance systems around them. So there has been a broader challenge related to the governance, the, the, the implementation of collecting societies and how they approach issues of their membership. And we are of the view that the chapter as provided in the bill covers the different aspects sufficiently from governance, reporting, uh, from the issues of um, those who need to be accredited, including the existing collecting societies who need to adhere to the new regime, uh, who will be given time to also adapt to the new processes and the role of the regulator. In terms of the, the question about the tribunal, uh, although this section is about the collecting society, I think one of the concerns was that um, there should be a collecting society for performers. Um, one of the comments was around the actors. So we see this um, provision as very significant because it will enable different 
um, uh, different work streams to have collecting societies as and when uh, those formations are, are established or are required. So it provides that uh, additional uh, framework, a legal framework for the collecting societies. And in terms of the foreign collecting societies, the provisions, um, there are provisions that talks to the foreign collecting societies and we also promote that the um, the relationships be reciprocal. So in, in terms of that, meaning that the collecting, collecting societies must ensure that they um, assess the other uh, collecting, so collecting societies and other jurisdictions and ensuring that there is, there is expediency in terms of how the relationships uh, favor them. And uh, the allowance is also provided for an agreement that those collecting societies can have uh, across the different uh, jurisdictions. So the proposed uh, amendment, we of the V's already catered for in the bill in terms of the foreign uh, jurisdictions and foreign collecting societies. So overall, uh, Chair, we are of the view that um, this is a, uh, it's a very uh, strengthened provision on collect collecting societies, and it will ensure that there is that legal framework, that certainty and clarity in terms of how these institutions are governed in the in the Republic. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, are there any questions for clarity before we vote, uh, honorable members? Uh, as I indicated earlier, I would not like us to ask questions for clarity in the middle of voting. Any questions for clarity? Seems not. Uh, can we then vote uh, for one chapter one A? Those uh, in favor, please uh, raise your hand. Um, can I yes, please. Okay, Chair, those that have voted in favor of the acceptance of the CLSO and the DTIC responses are as follows. For Gauteng, um, Honorable Dango. For the Northern Cape, Honorable Moimang. For Limpopo, Honorable Mamarakhani. For um, Northwest, Honorable Lansman. For Limpopo, for Free State, Honorable Mashodi. And for Eastern Cape, Honorable Hai. Honorable Lansman is not West, eh? <laughs> not Free State. Chair, can I just do that again for the records? My yeah. apologies. Okay, um, uh, um, for Gauteng, Honorable Dango, for Northern Cape, Honorable Moimang, for Limpopo, Honorable Mamarahani, for Northwest, Honorable Lansman, for Free State, Honorable Mashodi, and for Eastern Cape, Honorable Kai. Thank you so much. Can we please lower our hands, Honorable Members? Honorable Dango, please lower your hand. Thank you. Those who vote against, please raise your hand. Three, there is one um, against. It's um, for the Western Cape, Honorable Lund. Thank you so much. Please lower your hand, Honorable. Thank you. Uh, those who are abstaining, please raise your hand. Three abstentions are captured as follows. Form for Malanga, Honorable Basha, for KZN, Honorable Brantasif. Um, and we've also noted abstentions from Honorable Matabula and Honorable Tafini. Thank you so much. Please lower your hands, Honorable Members. Um, and then we go to section 22C, uh, Advocates. Um, I've actually already spoken to all of the, the sections in chapter one. All, all okay. Yes. So so all of these have been have been um have been spoken to. And then the next clause, clause 28, Chair, there's been no proposals on that on that clause. Okay, Let, let's then vote for clause 27 uh, before we go to clause 20. Uh, also, when we're voting, we're voting for the whole chapter, which includes section 22C. Is that right? Yes, uh, and And 22F. Okay. Yes, and yes, 22, yes. Of course, we're voting for the chapter. Okay, thank you so much. Yes. Thank you so much. Uh, and I remember, can we then go to clause 28? Because there are no 
No, Chair, we still need to we still need to vote on actual clause twenty seven, Chair. Twenty seven. Oh, yes, oh, we okay. just voted on the um, acceptance on of the, the DPIC and, and the yeah. responses, but we still need to vote on the actual clause. Okay. Uh, those in favor of uh, clause twenty seven, please uh, raise your hand. Um, three of those provinces that have voted in favor of clause um, 27, we have Gauteng, Northern Cape, Limpopo, Free State, Eastern Cape, and Northwest. Okay, thank you so much. Please lower your hands, honorable members. Thank you. Those voting against clause 27, please raise your hand. There's one um, against from the Western Cape. Thank you very much. Please uh, lower your hand, noble uh, lot. Thank you so much. Those who are abstaining, please raise your hand, noble members. G abstentions are captured as follows. We have an abstention from Pumalanga and KZN, and we note the abstention from Honorable Matavula. Um, I, I don't see any um, for the abstention from Honorable Tafini. Okay. Okay. And members, uh, please uh, let's lower our hands. Thank you so much. We then go to Clause 28, honorable members, uh, there are no proposals there. And we then vote for the adoption of Clause 28. Those in favor, please raise your up your hands. Okay, Chair, those provinces, can Chair, may I proceed? Yes, please. Okay, Chair, um, Chair those provinces that have voted for Clause, um, for clause 28, um, without amendments are as follows, um, Northern Cape, Limpopo, Free State, Northwest, Eastern Cape, and Gauteng. Thank you so much. Let's lower our hands on our members. Thank you so much. Those who are voting against, please raise your hands. Three again against, we have one, the Western Cape. Thank you so much, Honorable Lund. Please uh, lower your hand. Thank you. Those uh, who are abstaining, please raise your hand. Um, three abstentions are captured as follows. Um, Pumalanga, um, Rautasef, and we note the abstention from Honorable Matavula. Thank you so much. Please lower your hand, uh, Honorable Matula. Thank you so much. We then go to um, clause 29, uh, Mr. Bazia. Clause 29. Thank you, Chief. 27, yes. Offences. Thank you, Chairperson. Gee, on on this um, clause, um, there was a concern raised um, by Gauteng um, in respect of that uh, offences must also be if something is is done not for commercial purposes. Um, but we think it might have been an old version of the bill that 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 this was referring to because the offences are in fact already. Uh, for both commercial and non-commercial purposes. There was also a proposal from Gauteng's um, in respect of civil remedies to be provided for, but the department will speak to that. Um, what I would like to speak to is there was also in this proposal re relating to civil remedies, they also made it very clear that it is necessary that the intention be made very, very clear. And in that respect, um, we do propose some um, amendments to the bill to, to in fact give effect to that proposal. 
because the way the bill was worded, you could have interpreted as that there was um, something was made a crime that was in fact allowed by the by other sections in the bill, and that and that is not that is not the intention. So, Chair, there are some proposals uh, for amendments. Um, if I can ask you just to go a little bit down uh, over to page seventy six on the screen, because there are some uh, proposed amendments there. Yes, yes, a little bit more, if you don't mind, please. Yeah, so the proposal from, from Gauteng also speaks to civil remedies, which the department will speak to. But in respect of the intention part, we recommend that um, under paragraph, paragraph A in subsection 5B, capital B, that subparagraphs 2 and 3 be combined, because that will make it clear that there is a requirement for intention and it can't be um, unintended um, transgression of, of the act. Um, in our response, we're also referring to 28P, but we will get to that when we get to the, to the next um, discussion on that. Um, Chair, on the same section, there was also proposals for new um, offences to be inserted, um, but that was not recommended. The and the first proposal um, in, in 4A would, have, would result in every person who owns a cell phone committing a crime just by owning the cell phone. It seems that there's wording missing from the proposed um, amendment. Then the other uh, proposed um, uh, offences are already provided for in subsection 5A of the bill. So that would also not be recommended. And then there was also a proposal to make possession an offence. And um, from our side, we would not recommend that to be an offence. Um, it's not saying that it should never be an offence, but not um, without proper studies and research being done on, on the impact and how to make sure that people's rights are still um, protected um, in light of, of search and seizure rights that such an offence would, would bring um, about. Um, then there was also a proposal in respect of infringe versus circumvent from the Northwest. But um, from our side, we do not recommend that the terminology used by the bill is in fact correct. Um, infringing is copyright that is infringed and the circumvention in this case relates to a technological protection measure. So circumvent is in fact the, the correct word. From the Northern Cape, there was also a proposal for specific fines to be to be mentioned. Um, from our side, we would not recommend the, the inclusion of specific monetary amounts. There is an Adjustment of Fines Act that allows courts to look at the value of a, an imprisonment term at the time that the sentencing is being given. So it, it just makes it better um, and, and the, the, the act more future proof if we don't put specific amounts in. And that advice actually came from the Department of Justice. Um, so that is what we what we reacted to there. Um, then there was also a, a, a concern about um, from the Northwest in respect of the amounts uh, or rather the percentage claim from juristic persons, um, but that the department will speak to. So Chair, those are the are the proposed amendments. And then the, the one that we definitely recommend is um, to give effect to the intention um, and that there then be an amendment to um, in this in this clause to the new proposed subsection five capital B uh, in paragraph A. So that par subparagraphs two and three are combined. Thank you, Chair. If I may then hand over to the department to speak um, to the civil remedy specifically um, and also the, the amount in respect of or the percentage in respect of juristic persons. Thank you, Chair. Thank you so much, uh, Advocate Fanamir. Uh, Dr. Masota. Um, thank you, Chairperson. Uh, thank you, Advocate. In terms of the, uh, the areas that I need to uh, talk to on the civil remedies, um, we have considered uh, through the processes in Parliament as well, it was extensively considered the issue of uh, civil, civil remedies versus criminal uh, remedies. And because of the seriousness of the um, challenges of online infringements and the current digital challenges with um, what happens online with the works that are being exploited without fair remuneration to rights holders, to the creators, 
uh, it was decided that um, the, 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 the penalties or the, 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 the measures that are taken against the offenses should be very strong and serious. And um, I have indicated also that when we have engagements with other um, colleagues in, in other jurisdictions that deals with intellectual property um, infringements or enforce, enforcement issues, the concern is that uh, there is a need for a stronger um, intellectual property regime that ensures enforcement and the issues of, uh, uh, of online infringements or these types of uh, offenses are taken very seriously. So we think that um, given the seriousness of the rights that we are trying to protect as government and also in terms of what the bill is trying to achieve, already there are uh, concerns that some of the provisions don't provide uh, adequate legal protection, say for example, on the technological protection measures that they should be strengthened. So we think that having stronger uh, penalties or stronger uh, measures or, or remedies against offenses will ensure that there is this um, balance of ensuring that they, the deterrence of certain behaviors, um, especially on the online infringements that could have very strong and serious uh, implications for those who are creating works um, in the Republic. And on the juristic person, uh, that was also a consideration because there are infringements that could be um, that could occur because uh, dealt with by a uh, juristic person, not just natural persons, and that they 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 they, they um, ensuring that these are addressed in, uh, will make sure that there is that additional protection as well uh, when the infringements or the rights are abused by juristic persons. So it was a consideration in the National Assembly, um, extensively debated also in terms of the penalties uh, that should follow from such. So we think that with what has been provided in the bill, these remedies should be retained and they will um, assist in terms of creating a balance in the um, creative uh, space, ensuring that the rights are adhered to, and that um, those who contravene intentionally, um, they they are aware of the consequences thereof. And also internationally, uh, the legislation will be seen as taking these matters seriously as well, from an enforcement and from provisions in the in the legislation. So we think that um, they they should be uh, they should be retained. Thank you, thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, DDG. Any clarities, honorable members? Uh, none. We then vote uh, uh, those who are voting in support of uh, section 27, uh, clause 29. Please raise your hand. Yes, my dear. Thanks, Chi. Thanks. So we're capturing the, the votes of um, the acceptance of the CLSO um, um, responses to clause 29, section 27, and the proposed amendments. Um, it's been captured as follows. Um, for Gauteng, Honorable Dango. Um, for Free State, Honorable Mashuri. For Northern Cape, Honorable Moimang. For Limpopo, Honorable Mamarahana. Um, for Northwest, Honorable Lansman. And for Eastern Cape, Honorable Hai. Thank you so much. Can we please lower our hands, honorable uh, members? Next one is those who are voting against uh, the proposed amendments. Yes, uh, here we have one um, against. Is is um, the Western Cape honorable want? Thank you very much. Can lower your hand, uh, honorable uh, lot. Please. Thank you so much. Those who are abstaining, please raise your hand. Um, three abstentions are captured as follows for Pumalanga, Honorable Pasha, for Kaizirin, Honorable Bratisif, and Honorable Matabula. Thank you so much. Can you please lower your hands, Honorable Members? Team, please lower your hand. Thank you very much. Can we now uh, 
Honorable members, vote for clause 29. Those in favor, please raise your hand. Okay, um, um, Mayor Chi, yes, um, yes. Um, those provinces that have voted in favor of Clause 29 with the proposed amendments are as follows Northern Cape, Northwest, Limpopo, Eastern Cape, Gauteng, and Free State. Thank you so much. Uh, can we please lower our hands, honorable members? Those who are voting uh, against uh, the adoption of Clause 29, please raise your hand. Three, um, um, those provinces that have voted against Clause 29 is the Western Cape. Okay, thank you. Honorable uh, Lord, please uh, lower your hand. Thank you so much. Uh, those who are abstaining, please uh, raise your hand. Um, three abstentions are captured as follows. Um, Pumalanga, KZN, and we note the abstention from Honorable Matabula. Thank you very much. Please lower your hands, honorable members. Uh, Mr. Bazia, can we go to the next clause? Clause 30, section 28. Advocate. Thank you, Chair. On this, there was not so much a proposal for amendment as just a concern that was raised. Um, and then from our side, we do not recommend any amendment. There is no conflict. So there was a concern that this clause conflicts with Section 23.2 of the Act, um, but but it's not. The, section, the, the amendment to Section 28 provides clarity. Um, so in other words, it actually just complements uh, Section 23.2. Uh, I'm not sure if the department wants to add something specifically. Um, there wasn't something from them in writing, but maybe they want to speak to this. Thank you, Chair. Thank you so much, Dr. Masocha. Um, thank you, Chair. We concur with the advocate on this one. There was no issue around it. Um, just clarification. Thank you. All right. Thank you so very much. Honorable members, can you now vote for Section 28, Clause 30. Those in favor, please raise your hand. Madea. Yes, Chair. Um, those um, that have voted in favor of um, accepting the um, responses are as follows. Um, for Northern Cape, Honorable Muimang. For Northwest, Honorable Lansman. For Limpopo, Honorable Mamarahani. For Houting, Honorable Dango. For Free State, Honorable Mashori. And for Eastern Cape, Honorable Kai. Thank you so much. Can you please lower your hands, Honorable Members? so much those voting against uh, section 28 clause 30 please raise your hand um, please, uh, those voting against um close um the, the responses is um um for western tape honorable Lunt and honorable Tafini. thank you so much I'll see, I'll see the, sorry i'm not standing i'm not against okay. Oh. Ms. Matia, which one we were dealing with is this? Abstention. That was that was a, that was the against. Um, Ms. Kafini's hand was up, but then I see <laughs> that she put it down again. So I just wanted to double check. Um, so far we have the Western Cape. Ms. Um, Honorable Kafini, are you voting against or are you abstaining? Because I see your hand is up again. Anna uh, Brita Feni, can you hear me? Yes, I'm here, Chair. Can you please lower your hand or are you voting against? 
because your hand is up. I'm not, I'm not singing, Chair, not against. Can you drop it now? Because we were not yet there. Okay, thank, thank you, Chair. Oh, all right, thanks. We now, uh, on those who are abstaining, if you are abstaining, you can then raise your hand. Um, Chi, um, abstention. Okay. Yes, I can hear you. I, I can see your hand. Yes, okay. it's not yet. Okay, Chi, abstentions are captured as follows. Pumpumalanga, Honorable Boshop, who pays it in, Honorable Bratisif. Um, we've also got abstentions from Honorable Matambula and Honorable Tafini. Uh, thank you so much. You can lower your hand, uh, honorable members, please. And now voting for or against uh, clause 30. Is that correct? Correct, yeah. yeah. Those in favor of uh, adoption of clause 30, please uh, raise your hand. Okay, Chi, okay, Chi um, those provinces that have voted um, um, for, um, in, for Clause 30 without amendments are Gauteng, Limpopo, Eastern Cape, Northern Cape, Northwest, and Free State. Thank you very much. Can you please lower your hand, honorable members? Those who, oh, honorable, sorry, those who are voting against, please uh, raise your hand. Three against, we have one, um, so we still take. Thank you very much. Uh, please lower your hand. Okay. Those who are seeing, please uh, raise your hand. Okay, Chi, abstentions are captured as follows. For KZN, um, for, um, we've got um, KZN for Malanga, and then we also note the abstentions from Honorable Matabula and Honorable Tafini. Thank you very much. We, can you please uh, lower your hand, Honorable Members? Honorable Tim and Honorable Tafini, please uh, lower your hand. Okay, we now go to clause 31. Uh, Advocate, you indicate if you'll be taking all the sections or one by one. Um, Chi, yeah, I think if I could perhaps first do uh, the, the, the general comment and then focus on section 28P because there are definitely amendments on 28P and then we can perhaps move to the other sections. I hope that will be in order. Um, okay. Chi, from... From the northwest side, there was just a concern raised that the bill must be strengthened to protect against abusive practices and that, in fact, the bill does do, but the department can also speak to that. Chair, the, the very important section is 28P, um, and there were proposals from Gauteng specifically on 28P relating to um, sub uh, or paragraph A in subsection 1, um, and what, what they were saying is that the, currently the way it is worded, it actually makes um, it, it possible for you to contravene something in the Act that is allowed by the Act, and they are correct. So the proposal is that in Section 28P, Subsection 1, Paragraph A, the words by law, comma, including is, is inserted. So then it is not just an exception that provides the the defense but anything allowed by law and then um, section 28p is also affected by the blind sa case so we've already dealt with that when we looked at section 19d um, but i mentioned that when we it comes to voting we will then raise it again here and this is then in fact where we will then raise it to say that subsection 2 um, should be deleted in full and then in subsection 3 there will be consequential amendments in other words just to remove the reference to subsection 2 
Um, then on the same section, Chair, there was also a concern raised by the Northern Cape relating to the Electronic Communications and Transactions Act that was removed from the bill. And their concern was, but that's very relevant. And although we agree with that, the problem is that the those specific sections in the Electronic Communications Act, Transactions Act was in fact removed by the Cyber Crimes Act. So it is no longer in existence. So to refer to it actually will be a nullity because it's no longer on the statute book. Um, and then from our side, we would not recommend that we now refer to the Cyber Crimes Act because this is exactly the type of thing that you get um, because other bills, other acts are amended. They they will um, be repealed by something or they may repeal something. And then you sit with, with a reference to law that is no longer in existence, yet that law applies. Whether you refer to it or not, it does apply. So on, on Section 28P, Chair, we will just make a proposal um, to include the words by law, including, and then to delete subsection two with the consequential amendments. Um, thank you, Chair. Thank you so much. Um, Dr. Masocha? Thank you, Chair. On the um, comment by the Northwest on the di digital rights management, just to clarify that the bill does provide for the digital rights. Um, example is the new insertions that have been made in terms of um, the di digital rights themselves um, from the treaties uh, to make the work available to the public, communicating the work to the public by wire or wireless means, ensuring that uh, offenses are also um, uh, established when it comes to uh, abuse or contravention of those rights. Uh, furthermore, there are various provisions that have been made on the technological protection measures and also the copyright management information. So we we are of the view that there they are provisions that are there to address issues of digital rights. And we also note other laws uh, by other departments. Uh, so for example, the uh, Cyber Crimes Act that deals with uh, digital rights related um, issues. Uh, so we think that with the bill, these issues are, are covered. And in terms of the proposals, um, that advocate was referring to on in section 28P. We recommend them as well from the department side. Uh, thank you, Chair. Thank you so much. Okay, can I just clarity, advocate and the DPG, with regard to section 28Q, are you still coming back on that one? Yes, Chair. I haven't I haven't addressed Q yet. Okay, all right. Thank you so much. Um not members, uh, the uh, proposal that are uh, made with regard. So the first one is the 28.0. Is that correct? Yeah, the proposed amendments are in respect of uh, 28P. The, the, the general comment from the Northwest was on the whole clause, clause 31, um, just to say that, that the clause is necessary. So it was more in, in the nature of support, I, I think, for the clause. Thank you, Chair. Thank you so much. Okay, oh, now remember this, uh, you know, deal with the section 28D, the exception in respect of technological protection measures. Uh, there are proposed amendments, uh, uh, 28P, uh, 1A, an act emitted by law, including uh, blah, blah, blah. And then uh, two, uh, delete in full, three, uh, in terms of subsection 2B. Those in favor, please uh, raise your hand. Or oh, before that, uh, are there any clarities? Before we vote. Not. Can we, those in favor, please raise your hand. Okay, Chief, um, yes, um, those um, um, that have voted in favor of the, um, uh, the, the proposed amendments from the CLSLO and DTIC are as follows. Um, um, for Gauteng, Honorable Dango, for Northwest, Honorable Lansman, for Lompopo, Honorable Mamarahana, for Free State, Honorable Mashori, for Eastern Cape, Honorable Chai, and for Northern Cape, Honorable Moiman. Thank you so much. Please lower your hand, Honorable Members.
those who are voting against, please raise your hand. Um, against, we have one for Western Cape, Honorable Lund. Thank you so much. Uh, please lower your hand, Honorable Lund. Lower your hand, please. Thank you. Those who are abstaining, please raise your hand. Three abstentions are captured as follows. Form for Malanga, Honorable Boshoff, for KZN, Honorable Brautasif. And we also note the abstentions from Honorable Matabula and Honorable Tafini. Thank you so much. Uh, please lower your hand, Honorable Members. And, and uh, take us through uh, Section 28Q, uh, Advocates Enforcement by Commission. Thank you. Okay. So 28Q, um, the proposal from Gauteng was to delete um, Q, which deals with enforcement by the Commission. So if I may hand to the Department on this, because it is a policy matter. Thank you. Thank you so much. EDG. Thank you, Chair. The, um, the, the, the Commission, which is the Companies and Intellectual Properties um, a Regulator, uh, commission by the, it's one of the regulatory entities of the DTIC. It's an enforcement entity, and um, their role is very important because of issues of enforcement that will emanate from the from the law, and also from their role in terms of the mandate related to juristic persons uh, from the Companies Act point of view. Um, it was not clear from the submission by the province why. Um, the role of the regulator should not be in the legislation. Um, we hear of legislation that is um, toothless at times where people say the um, regulators are not having a role, they, are, they don't have uh, strong enforcement powers in, uh, provided for in a law, then um, lots of things happen and they're not involved. So we think that this is a very important um, provision that talks to the role of regulatory entities when it comes to enforcement and oversight over legislation. So we think that uh, the role of the commission is very important. They have a strong mandate on intellectual property. They register intellectual property. They do enforcement of other intellectual property laws. So this will be uh, one of their mandates from a uh, copyright and performance protection perspective. So we think that this provision should be retained in the bill. Thank you, Chair. Thank you so much. Uh, Honorable members, we now vote uh, in terms of retaining the clauses it is in the bill. Those in favor, please uh, raise your hand. Mr. Um, Summons. Yes, those for, uh, those um, that have voted in favour of retain um, of the um, CLSO and DTIC responses are as follows: for Northern Cape Honourable Muimang, for Eastern Cape Honourable Hai, for Free State Honourable Mashodi, for Lampopo Honourable Mamarhana, um, for Gauteng Honourable Dango, and for North West Honourable Lansman. Thank you very much, Honourable Members. Let's lower our hands. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you very much. Uh, those who are voting against, please raise your hand. Three, four against, we have one for Western Cape under the want. Thank you very much. Those who are abstaining, please raise your hand. Um, three abstentions are captured as follows. Form for Malanga, Honorable Basha, for KZN, Honorable Bratisif, and we note the abstention from Honorable Matavula. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you very much. Please lower your hands, Honorable Members. Honorable Tim, please lower your hand, please. Thank you so much. <clears throat> so the uh, we now vote on the clause, the world clause, uh, clause 31. Those in favor, please uh, raise your hand. Um, 
Um, G, um, those provinces that have voted in favor of um, Clause 31 and the proposed amendments are as follows. We have Northern Cape, Free State, Eastern Cape, Gauteng, Limpopo, and Northwest. Thank you so much. Let's lower our hands, honorable members. Those who are voting against the adoption of Clause 31, please say, raise your hand. Here we have one from the Western Cape. Thank you so much. Uh, those who are abstaining, please raise your hand. Um, thank you, Chi. Um, Chi abstentions are captured as follows. Um, um, Pumalanga, KZN, and we note the abstention from Honorable Matabula. Thank you very much. Please lower your hands, I remember. We now go to uh, clause 22. There are no uh, amendments uh, there. Can we then vote for the adoption of uh, clause 32? Honorable members, please uh, raise your hand, those who are in favor of adopting clause uh, 32. Um, thank you, Chi. Um, those that have voted in favor of clause um, 32 without amendments are as follows. Northern Cape, Free State, Gauteng, Limpopo, Eastern Cape, and Northwest. Thank you very much. Please lower your hands, honorable members. Those who are voting against, please uh, raise your hand. Um, there's one against, uh, that's the Western Cape Chairperson. Thank you so much. Those who are abstaining, please uh, raise your hand. We have three abstentions from Pumalanga and KZN, and we note the abstention from Honorable Matabula. Thank you very much. Honorable members, please lower, lower your hand. Clause 32 has been adopted. <clears throat> we then go to Clause 33 uh, with all its subsections. Uh, advocate. Uh, thank you, Chief. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah, I'm sorry, please I think someone ahead. was trying to. Oh, can I go ahead? Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Yes, please. please. Um, Chief, in clause 33, there are two sections with proposed amendments. So, uh, with your leave, I would like to, to, to um, tackle both of them um, at once. The, the first in respect of 29A, section 29A, the functions of the tribunal. The, the, there was a proposal from the, um, from Gauteng relating um, what the tribunal can do. And it's specifically related in respect of setting aside or varying uh, an agreement. And um, the department will speak to, to, to that and whether that is, is desirable. And in respect of the orders of the tribunal, section 29H, um, to speak to administrative fines, um, and the, the Gauteng's proposal was that there should not be administrative fines that Section 29H um, C, specifically in respect of administrative fines, should be deleted. So, Chief, if I may be in respect of those two um, sections in Clause 33, may I hand to the Department to just to speak to those two. Thank you, Chief. Thank you so much. Over to you, uh, DDG. Thank you, Chairperson. The role of the tribunal is very important in terms of the bill. And uh, we we think that it is going to play a very important role in terms of dispute resolutions that will uh, that will arise in terms of agreements and other matters related to the to the to the bill. And we are of the view that the provisions have, as have been strengthened, um, they are going to uh, help to create more rights, uh, protection of those rights, and ensuring that um, there is a platform for di dispute resolutions in terms of agreements, uh, issues of royalties, uh, where there are disputes around them, and, 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 and other matters that relate to the, to the bill. 
And um, we on, on the issue of the agreement, the proposed amendment uh, to um, give guidance to, to the tribunal on how it should ad attend to issues of contracts and so on. We have the view that discretion is very important when it comes to the work of the tribunal. While we note the um, concerns that there may not be certainty in terms of how they make certain uh, orders or how they deal with certain adjudication of matters, we recommend that the discretion and independence of the tribunal be sustained uh, because it will be an independent tribunal. It will be established in terms of the law and it will have the rights and the powers to, uh, to, to, to be able to uh, work around different matters in a, in a, in a, in a fair and judicial manner. And also it's a voluntary, it's a voluntary platform. So we think that as it is, it should not be dictated to in terms of how it deals with the matters, that the discretion should be retained. And on the orders of the tribunal, particularly when it comes to fines, um, we are also of the view that the, tr the tribunal should be strengthened. It should have the powers to be able to deal with certain matters and it should be able to impose fines and different types of remedies depending on the matters or circumstances at hand. So the administrative fines powers are not unique in terms of this tribunal. Other tribunals do have such powers and we think it should also be strengthened enough to be able to deal with various matters that arise as far as um, the legislation is concerned. Thank you, Chair. Thank you so much. Uh, honorable members, uh, let us now vote. Um, section 29A, those in favor, please uh, raise your hand. Okay, okay, if I may, Chair, um, the responses were given in terms of both Section 29A and 29H. Um, are members voting in terms of both or just 29A on its own and then we'll vote separately on 29H? 29A, then we'll come back to 29H. Thanks, Chair. Okay. Over Chief, to you, um, Mr. Yes, thanks, Chief. Um, those that, that have voted in favor of um, the responses in terms of um, 29A are as follows um, for Northwest, Honorable Lunchman, for Northern Cape, Honorable Moimang, for Eastern Cape, Honorable Hai, for Limpopo, Honorable Mamarahana, for Free State, Honorable Mashodi, and for Gauteng, Honorable Dango. Okay, please uh, lower your hand, Honorable Members. Those against uh, section uh, 29A, please raise your hand. Three against, we have one for the Western Cape on the land. Okay. Those who are abstaining, please raise your hand. Um, three abstentions are captured as follows. Um, from Pumalanga, on the Bopashok, for um, KZN, on the Bopratasif. I and mean, then we note the abstentions from Honorable Matabula and Honorable Tafeni. Thank you so much. Please lower your hands, Honorable Members. Honorable Tafeni, please uh, lower your hand. Thank you. We now go to section 29H, H, orders of uh, tribunal. Those in favor, please uh, raise your hand. Um, um, thank you, Chairperson. Um, those that have voted in favor of um, the responses in terms of 29H are as follows for Northern, Northern Cape, Honorable Moimang, for Limpopo, Honorable Mamrahani, for Houting, Honorable Dango, for Eastern Cape, Honorable Hai, for Northwest, Honorable Lansman, and for Free State, Honorable Mashuri. Thank you so much. Let's please lower our hands, Honorable Members. Those voting against, please raise your hand. G, 
country against UF1 for the Western Cape Honorable Land. Thank you very much. Those who are abstaining, please raise your hand. Three abstentions are captured as follows. From Pumalanga, Honorable Basha, for KZN, Honorable Pratisef, and then we note the abstentions from Honorable Matabula and Honorable Tabini. Thank you so much. Please uh, lower your hands, honorable members. Thank you very much. We now go to clause uh, 34. There are no proposed amendments there. Therefore, we'll uh, vote for or against or abstain. On, uh... Chair, we still, sorry, correction, Chair, we still need to vote on clause 33 before we proceed to clause 44, Chair. Oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> sorry, thank you for reminding me. Um, okay, those uh, in favor of uh, adoption of vote uh, 33, please uh, raise your hand. It's a long day. Okay, thank you, Chief Person. Um, Chi, um, those provinces that have um, voted in favor of clause 33 without amendments are as follows. Um, Northwest, Free State, Northern Cape, Eastern Cape, and Limpopo. Thank you very much. Let's lower our hands. Uh, I've, well, I've the... also voted in favor, Chairperson. And then oh, Gauteng. Gauteng, yes. Oh, okay. Thank you very much. Those voting against, oh, an upper member, can you please lower your hand? Uh, an upper majority. Those are voting against, please raise your hand. Chair, we have one from the Western Cape. Thank you very much. Those who are abstaining, please uh, raise your hand. Um, three abstentions are captured as follows. Um, Pumalanga. Um, plays it in, and then we also note the abstentions of Honorable Tafini and Honorable Matabola. Thank you very much. Please lower your hands, Honorable Members. We now go to Clause 34. Those in favor of Clause 34, please uh, raise your hand. Um, thank you, Chair. Um, those provinces that have voted in favor of clause 34 without amendments are captured as follows. Um, Northern Cape, Northwest, Eastern Cape, Limpopo, Gauteng, and Free State. Thank you very much. Please lower your hand, Honorable Members. Honorable Mashodi, thank you. Those who are voting against adoption of clause 34, please raise your hand. We have one against from the Western Cape Chief Person. Thank you so much. Please lower your hand there, Honorable Lot. Thank you. Those who are abstaining, please uh, raise your hand. Um, three abstentions are captured as follows. Um, Pumalanga, and um, we have from KZN, and then we know three abstentions from Honorable Matabola and Honorable Tafini. Thank you very much. We now go to clause 35. Uh, section 39. The advocate. Thank you, Chairperson. Um, section 39 deals with the regulations, um, Chair, and um, um, from the Free State, there was uh, support for prescribing procedure for the conduct of tribunal hearings, so that is just support. Um, also from the Free State, they were concerned about a one-size-fits-all approach on payment of full royalties, um, and then from the Free State and a number of other provinces in respect of minimum standards for contracts. Chair, in respect of those two issues, um, 
the the proposals was for deletion of subsection C uh, capital G, which deals with um, these uh, minimum standards for contracts. Um, however, the proposal from or, or rather the response from the departments the department indicated the need for this because it is for the protection of the vulnerable parties to a contract. So, Chi, um, if we can, uh, Mr. Bazier, if we can go a little bit lower on the document over to your page 87, you will see there's some font in blue. Yes, thank you. Uh, you've got them. Um, so, Chi, what we would propose is that... Um, Instead of deleting um, CG because it provides for, for the vulnerable parties, that we perhaps rather change the wording to address the concerns. And in that regard, Chair, there are two proposals that, that we're putting forward. Um, I'm, I'm not sure how to deal with that in respect of voting or if there will just be a vote in favor of, of, of a change of wording and then we deal with it when we deal with the e-list. Um, but I'll put both proposals forward. So the, the one would be that CG would read prescribing standard contractual terms reflecting rights or protection afforded by this act that must be included in agreements to be ended in, in terms of this act. So what the first proposal does is to say that you still look at contractual terms, but we make it very clear that it is only terms that reflect rights or protection afforded by this act. In other words, what the minister may say is the following rights are clearly provided for in the act. And in order to, to raise awareness <clears throat> for these vulnerable parties of their rights, the following must be stipulated in a contract. Or we can remove the word terms totally um, so that there's no um, um, confusion about the um, what what it is that is is being prescribed that it's not interfering with contractual freedom by saying prescribing the standard elements for agreements to be entered in terms of this act to ensure that rights or protection afforded by this act are duly provided for. So those those are the options that we would recommend there. And then in to address the issue of the one size fits all for royalties, um, the proposal is that it is that CI be amended to be very clearly that the royalty rates or tariffs are only in respect of resale royalty rights, as that is also what was proposed in the Farlem Commission. Um, but the department can say a bit more about that as well. Chair, there was also a proposal from Gauteng to extend the period of advertising of these regulations to 60 days, um, and the department can speak to that as well. And uh, then I think lastly, from the Northwest, there was a proposal in respect of paragraph CH. Um, and they were saying that it refers to the incorrect section. But Chair, I think that was also looking at uh, an old version of the bill, because that incorrect reference has already been corrected in the bill that is before the committee. Um, so Chair, if, if I may hand over to the department to speak to the lengthening of days specifically, um, and then, um, of course, relating to these proposed um, amendments. Thank you, Chair. Thank you so much, uh, Advocate. Uh, DDC? Thank you, Chair. In terms of the, um, the recommendation to extend the period to put out the regulations to the public to 60 days, we, we, we are of the view that the standard practice of 30 days um, is, is sufficient. But, but then in terms of practice, we also at times uh, advertise longer. It could be 60 days, it could be um, 45 days, depending on the substantiveness of the, of the matters or the, the regulations um, in, in process. And there's also that allowance that the public can make a request for an extension and it has been done in different processes. Uh, so we think that 30 days um, as a practice should, should be retained uh, and that um, if there is a need for further arrangements that they can be accommodated as per how we normally do these processes. So it does not have to be stipulated in the, in the legislation. 
in terms of the proposed amendments, uh, we, 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 we support them, especially the minimum requirements or the support for protection when it comes to contractual agreements. And we also support that the, 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 the rate of royalties that were initially provided for, for various forms of users uh, be removed to allow for parties to make arrangements and also to allow for market forces to take place and that the only royalty that could be prescribed is the uh, resale royalty rights that has got to do with um, original artworks um, and the arrangements around that. So that is the only one that can be prescribed, but the others uh, we, we recommend that they be removed. So the, re the recommendations are supported, Chair. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, honorable members, uh, there is a their proposal in blue. Um, I think there is a so oh, that means the, we must choose one. Uh, is that correct, uh, advocate? Uh, yes, Chair. So, on in respect of CG, there are two two proposals. So the one would retain the word terms, and the other one would refer to elements. But both of them will will be limited to rights and protection afforded by the Act. Yes, thank you, Chair. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Honourable members, before we, we vote, can we then decide which one we go with? Or maybe even on that one, uh, first let's get a proposal and a second, uh, and then we vote for it, and then uh, on the other one. Honourable Moima. Thank you, Thank you Chair. Chair, the, the one, uh, the second one, uh, uh, it's the one that I propose that we we move forward because uh, it also uh, has an uh, an elaboration uh, which uh, is kept at as follows uh, to ensure that rights or protection afforded by this act are duly provided for, whereas uh, the one before that does not have this elaboration. So I'm of the view that the second one is more appealing and more understandable and appreciated than the first one. Thank you. <clears throat> okay. Any second? Uh, thank you very much, Honorable Chairperson. I second. Thank you very much. Any other proposal? Any contrary view? Between the two, none. Okay, um, we'll put that on the board then. Uh, let's just see if they are the, the sequence. I just want to check the sequence list. Section 39 um, deals with regulation. Okay. Those who in favor of uh, section 39 with the uh, uh, amendment as uh, the second one on CG, uh, please uh, raise your hand, as well as the uh, CL will vote for uh, the second CG as well as the uh, uh, CL. Chi, um, may I proceed? Uh, no, I was, I was just uh, reading before I put. Okay, you can proceed. Okay, Chair. Um, those um, uh, that have voted in acceptance of the CLSO response um, and DTIC responses and proposed amendments are as follows um, For Northwest, Honorable Lansman, for Houting, Honorable Dango, for Northern Cape, Honorable Moimang, for Lampopa, Honorable Mamarhani, for Free State, Honorable Mushodi, and for Eastern Cape, Honorable Hai. Thank you so much. Can we please uh, lower hands uh, if not for members? Those who are voting against uh, section uh, what, 39. Uh, Chief is no against the chair. 
No, let, let me rephrase. Maybe it's waiting for me to, to put it back. Uh, I just want to move back. Uh, camera is not moving. Just a minute. Oh yeah, section 39 on regulations. Plus, those are voting against uh, section 39 with the amendments that are proposed. Mm -hmm. Please raise your hand. Matia? Those who are voting against, um, Honorable Mamara Khan. None. Those who are abstaining, please raise your hand. Um, Chair, uh, abstentions of um, captured as follows Wumpu Malanga, Honorable Boshop, or KCD, Honorable Bratasi, and we note the abstentions of Honorable Tafini and Honorable Matadula. Thank you so much. Please lower your hands, the uh, honorable members. Number of team. Um, can, can I go up? Because uh, I need to know which clause was it that we were dealing with the uh, buzz here. Because we need to vote the, for against the clause. Oh, it was clause 35, Chi. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, those in favor of uh, adoption of cross 35, please uh, raise your hands. Ms. Matia. Yes, um, thank you, Chairperson. Um, those provinces that have voted in favor of um, clause 35 and its proposed amendments are as follows um, Eastern Cape, Northern Cape. Free State, Northwest, Limpopo, and Gauteng. Thank you so much. Please lower your hand, honorable members. And those who are voting against adoption of clause 39. Oh, sorry, 35. 35, sorry. <laughs> Section 39. Uh, 35, please raise your hand. Chair, we have one against um, from the Western Cape. Thank you so much. Please lower your hand, uh, number one. Thank you. Those who are abstaining, please uh, raise your hand. Um, so far, abstentions are as follows. For Mpumalanga, we've got Honorable Boshop, and then for, we, we know the abstention of Honorable Tafeni and Honorable Matabula. Okay, thank you very much. Please lower your hands, uh, honorable members. Honorable Tafeni, okay, thank you so much. We now go to close uh, 36, uh, advocate, section 39, unfor unfor un unenforceable contractual term. Close 36. Um, thank you, Jim. Um, Chair, on, on this one, the the concern was, again, related to contractual freedom. Um, but if I may ask for the department to respond to this, because it is also a policy matter. Thank you. Oh, okay. Thank you so much. DDG? Okay. Uh, the, this, this clause, uh, this provision aims to ensure protection for the authors and the rights holders. The reason being that... Um, they, they are they are they, they could be a violation of the legislation where uh, certain uh, provisions are not um, are not taken into consideration and um, the law is not applied the way it was intended and then they become unenforceable 
So this is to provide additional uh, protection to ensure that um, what has been provided for in terms of the protections and the rights uh, are taken into consideration by various parties who are going to be contracting or uh, collaborating in terms of the, the, the works and, and their rights. So we are of the view that um, although there was a proposal to, um, to, 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 to bring in some, 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 some measures around it, especially uh, via the, the, the tribunal, we think that by adding these measures, it's going to also weaken the protection because then it adds an additional burden for the rights holders to have to now be subjected to a tribunal process instead of the right being there for them automatically as provided by the by the bill. So we recommend that this amendment not be uh, taken into account and not be considered. Uh, yeah, thank, thank you, Chair. Thank you so much. Uh, honorable members, we will now be voting on the section 39B uh, that uh, the current uh, pro pro provision in the bill be retained. Those in favor, please uh, raise your hand. Uh, Ms. Solomon. Um, thank you, Chairperson. Um, those um, who have voted um, in favor of retaining um, um, and, in, 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 in acceptance of the responses are as follows. Um, for Northern Cape, under Paul Moimang, for Peace State, under Paul Moshori, for Lamtopo, under Paul Mamarhani, for Eastern Cape, under Paul Hai, for Gauteng, under Paul Lansman, and for Northwest, under Paul Lansman. For Gauteng, under Paul Dango, my apologies, and for Northwest, under Paul Lansman. <laughs> Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Solomon. Can we please lower our hands on our members? Those who vote against uh, Section 39B. Um, against, as a captured as follows for Western Cape, Honorable Lanchi. Thank you so much. Those who are abstaining, please raise your hand. Um, abstentions are captured as follows for Mpumalanga, Honorable Basha, for, for KZN, Honorable Brautasif, and we note the abstention of Honorable Makabula. Thank you very much. Please lower your hands, Honorable Members. Honorable Team, please lower your hand. Thank you so much. We will now vote for the adoption or gains of abstention on vote on clause 36. Those in favor of adoption of the clause 36, please raise your hand. Um, thank you, Chairperson. Um, those provinces that they voted in support of Clause 36 without amendments are as follows the Eastern Cape, Free State, Limpopo, Northwest, Northern Cape. My machine and, seems and to be omitting me sometimes. Okay, noted. Uh, please lower your hands, uh, honorable members. Those who voting against the ad adoption uh, of the of uh, clause thirty six, please raise your hand. There's one from the Western Cape Chairperson. Thank you so much. Please lower your hand. Uh, another launch. Thank you so much. Those who are abstaining, please uh, raise your hand. Those who are abstaining, please raise your hand. Um, Chair, abstentions are captured as follows. Um, we have abstentions from KZN, Pumananga, and we note the abstention of Andrew Matavula. Thank you very much. Please lower your hand, honorable members. Honorable team. Please lower your hand, uh, Honorable Chief. Please. 
Um, Please and lower then, your hand, uh, Honorable Tafeni. Chair, we captured the abstention of Honorable Tafeni as well. I think she, um, the, the uh, hand raising was a bit, um, yeah. But when we, 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 note, we note the abstention of Honorable Tafeni. Okay. Please lower your hand, uh, Honorable Tafeni. Honorable members, we will then consider uh, the clause 37, 38, and 39. We we'll start with uh, clause 37. Those in favor of clause 37, please raise your hand. Ms. Solomon. Yes, she, those um, provinces that have voted in favor of clause 37 without amendments so are as follows Gauteng, Eastern Cape, Free State, Northwest, Northern Cape, and Limpopo. Thank you so much. Please uh, lower your hands, uh, honorable members. Honorable Tango, please lower your hand. Thank you. Those who are voting against clause 37, please raise your hand. We note so one. Yes, we note one um, against from the Western Cape. Thank you so much. Those who are abstaining, please uh, raise your hand. Abstentions. I think Chair and members. Um, abstentions are um, captured as follows: um, Pumalanga, KZN, and then we note the abstentions from Honourable Matavola and Honourable Tafeni. Thank you so much. Please lower your hands, a number of members. Thank you so much. We now move to clause 38. Those in favor of clause 38, please raise your hand. Ms. Solomon. Um, those provinces that have voted in favor of clause 38 with, uh, without amendments are as follows Eastern Cape, Northern Cape, Gauteng, Free State, Limpopo, and Northwest. Thank you so much. Please lower your hands, honorable members. Thank you so much. Those who are voting against uh, clause 38, please raise your hand. Chief, there is one against from the Western Cape. Thank you so much. Those who are abstaining, please raise your hand. Um, the abstentions are captured as follows, Mpumalanga, KZN, and we note the abstention from Honorable Tafeni and Honorable Matabula. Thank you so much. Please lower your hands, uh, Honorable Members. Thank you so much. We now go to Clause 39. Those in favor of Clause 39, please uh, raise your hands. Solomon. Um, thank you, Chair. Those provinces that have voted in favor of Clause 39 without amendments are as follows Gauteng, Northern Cape, Eastern Cape, Limpopo, Free State, and Northwest. Thank you very much. Please lower your hands, honorable members. Those who are voting against Clause 39, please raise your hand. There is one against from the Western Cape. Thank you so much. Please lower your hand, Honorable Lont. Thank you so much. Those who are abstaining, uh, please uh, raise your hand. Those who are abstaining, please raise your hand. Um. Thank you, Chair. Abstentions are captured as follows. Pumalanga, KZN, 
and we note the abstentions of Honorable Papini and Honorable Matabula. Thank you so much. Uh, please lower your hands, honorable members. The Bazia, can you move to the next clause, clause 40? Can you push it up? Okay. Advocate Fanemeve. Thank you, Chairperson. Um, to you on, on this clause, um, this one deals with the, the short title of the commencement um, of the bill. Um, and Chair, just to uh, because we, we had a bit of confusion last time. This These proposed changes will not affect the role of the presidency at all. These changes are only for the operation um, effectiveness of the, the act after the presidency has completed its processes. So what happened is that from Gauteng's side, there was a concern about um, bills that go to the presidency, they enacted, uh, assented to, published everything, but they are not being brought into operation. And the proposal from their side was to say that it may not be less than 24 months uh, in, uh, after which it is brought into operation. So the reason for delaying operation is because there might be some things in practice that must be put in place. So for instance, in this bill, um, for the registration of collecting societies, there will have to be some measures put in place before that can be brought into operation. However, what we have with this bill is a constitutional court judgment that requires that certain things be rectified in the Act as soon as possible. So the proposal um, that, that we're making for an amendment to this clause is to bring in the 24 months um, that the, the that Gauteng is referring to, um, so in other words, to say the act is called the Copyright Amendment Act. Uh, don't worry about 2017. That is something that we, that we correct with the, with the final um, uh, act form when, when this is sent to the president for assent um, and comes into operation um, 24 months from the date of publication in the Gazette or an earlier date fixed by the president by proclamation in the Gazette. So in other words, once the president is satisfied that the bill and complies with the constitution, the president has assented, it is then published. And what this uh, proposed amendment will do is to say that um, if 24 months from that date of publication of the act, um, if it hasn't been brought into operation before then, it will automatically become operational. But then to specifically make it clear that this cannot apply to the matters that relate to the constitutional court judgment. Um, and therefore, then the proposal is also to add two subsections to say that the specific definitions contained in section one, which is now currently clause one, but once it becomes an act, we refer to it as a section, will come into operation upon the date of publication in the Gazette, and the same in respect of section 19D, which deals with persons with a disability. So, Chair, that is the, the proposal for amendment in respect of um, uh, Clause 40 and also sec um, Section 40. Uh, thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Advocate. Uh, DDG, Dr. Amasoto. Chairperson, we, we support the recommendations from the Advocate. Um, we've noted the arrangements around this particular clause. Thank you. Thank you so much. Honourable Members, uh, those who vote in favor of uh, clause 40, uh, subtitle and commencement, please raise your hand. Um, yes, thank you, Chief. Um, yes, thank you, Chairperson. Um, those that have voted in favor of the um, the responses and the proposed amendments are as follows for Houting, Honorable Tango, for Free State, Honorable Mushori. For Limpopo, Honorable Marama Marhani, Northwest, Honorable Lansman, for Eastern Cape, Honorable Hai, and for Northern Cape, Honorable Moimang. Thank you so much. Can we please lower our hands, Honorable Members? Thank you. Honorable Long, oh, sorry. Okay. Those who are voting against, please there, raise your hand. She against these one um, for the West Cape on the Holland. Thank you so much. Those who are abstaining, please raise your hand. Thank you. 
Uh, tree abstentions are captured as follows for KZN, Honorable Bratisev, for Mpumalanga, Honorable Bashoff, and we know tree abstentions from Honorable Tafeni and Honorable Matabola. Thank you so much. Please lower your hands, Honorable Members. Honorable Tafeni. We now go to uh, Sergio, Sergio 2. Um, advocate. Uh, thank you, Chief. Uh, Chief, is in respect uh, of Schedule Chief, 2. Chief, 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 sorry. Um, we still oh, sorry, sorry. Uh, can 40, we vote uh, then for the adoption of Clause 40? Those in favor, please uh, raise your hands. Ms. Solomons. Yes, um, thank you, Chairperson. Um, those provinces that have voted in favor of Clause 40 and the proposed amendments are as follows um, Northwest, Eastern Cape, Gauteng, Lampopo, and Northern Cape. Thank you very much. Please lower your hands, uh, honorable members. Chairperson, free state. And free state. No touch. And you can lower your hand, uh, honorable Masudi. Those who are voting against uh, uh, clause 40, please uh, raise your hand. She is one from the Western Cape against clause 40. Thank you so much. Please lower your hand, uh, Honorable Lord. Those, who, those who are abstaining, please raise your hand. Those who are abstaining. Mm -hmm. Um, Chair, um, abstentions are captured as follows, Mpumalanga and KZN, and we note the abstentions of Honorable Matavini and um, Honorable Matabula and Honorable Tafini. Thank you so much. Please lower your hands, uh, Honorable Members. Back to you, uh, Advocate, on Schedule 2. Thank you, Chairperson. Chair, on, on Schedule 2, there was just actually a concern raised on whether it was referring to the correct section. So when we have a Schedule 2 and Act, it is it is linked to a section um, in the actual Act. And in this case, um, the bill was referring to Section 22.3. Now, Section 22.3 um, does not in itself specifically deal with translative, uh, translation uh, licenses, but it does deal with exclusive licenses, which then includes translation licenses. So there was just a concern whether that is in fact the correct section and we can confirm that it is in fact the correct section that um, that the, is linked to the schedule. Thank you, Chief. So, so no amendments are, are necessary. Thank you, Chief. Thank you so much. Can I now vote in an adoption of a close, uh, sorry, schedule two? Was in favor? Chi, may I proceed? Yes, please. Okay, Chi. Um, those that have um, those um, in favour are captured as follows. Um, we've got um for the northwest honourable Lansman, for the eastern Cape honourable High, for Lampopo honourable Mamrahani, for Free State honourable Mashodi, and for Northern Cape honourable Moimo. And myself. And honourable sorry, on and and for Gauteng honourable Gaut um honourable Dango. Thank you so much. Can you please lower your hands, uh, honorable members? Okay. Uh, those who are voting against. Chief, those against, we have one um, for Western Cape on the Poland. Thank you so much. Please lower your hand, uh, honorable Lund. Those who are abstaining, please uh, raise your hand. Um, G abstentions are captured as follows: Form for Malanga, Honorable Pashov, for KZN, Honorable Bratisev, and we note the abstentions of Honorable Tafini and Honorable Matabola. Okay, thank you very much. Can please uh, 
blow your hands, a number of members. Okay. I just don't have the bill now, it is in the laptop. I just want to check if uh, there is schedule one that uh, we need to adopt or, or vote against. Can I get clarity? Because I don't have the, the bill in front of me now. Open the document that we're using. Can you quickly check, uh, uh, Ms. Solomon? Uh, no, there is no Schedule 1. Sorry if I may interrupt. There is no Schedule 1. Schedule 2 was amended in the, in the bill. So Schedule 2 is to the Act already, and it was amended in the bill. So there's nothing, oh. uh, no Schedule 1. Yes, thank you. Okay. Other than uh, uh, the section 22 uh, train brackets. Are there any other sections in the schedule? Uh, are you okay? Uh, apologies, yeah, I'm quickly, I'm quickly checking. Um, no, okay. yeah, I think if, if you adopt a schedule two, then then that is that is sufficient. Um, there's okay. there's not, yeah, the, it's it's the whole whole schedule. Yeah, it's that that is added to 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 the act. If you right. on the whole one, that should be sufficient. Thank you, Chair. Thank you so much. Uh, how do we then deal with the, the new matters? Uh, not explicitly provided Chief, for it. Chief, I may still need to vote on, on Schedule 2. That's what I was uh, checking. Uh, it is said that it's only that uh, section that we voted for already. Yeah, Chair, we voted in terms of the responses, but we didn't vote in terms of the actual schedule yet in terms of provinces. Oh, okay. Let's do that then, honorable members. Sorry for that. Those in favor of uh, uh, schedule two, please uh, raise your hand. Um, if I may okay. proceed, Chairperson. Um, yes, <laughs> Thanks, Chair. Those provinces that have voted in favor of Schedule 2 without amendments are as follows Eastern Cape, Northern Cape, Northwest, Free State, Gauteng, and Limpopo. Okay. Please lower your hands, eh, honorable eh, eh, members. Honorable Moimank. Okay. Those who are voting against uh, adoption of Schedule 2, please raise your hand. Chi, we have one against from the Western Cape. Okay. Those who are uh, abstaining, please raise your hand. Those who are abstaining, please raise your hand. Thank you. Um, uh, thanks, Chair members. The abstentions are um, captured as follows, um, Mpumalanga and KZN, and we note the abstentions of um, Honorable Matavula and Honorable Kafeni. Thank you so much. Please lower your hands, uh, Honorable members. Okay. Um, I was uh, checking uh, what how we do we do with the, these new matters that are not explicitly provided for in the bill or not included at all? Yeah, may I perhaps refer this to, to um, Advocate Ali? Because these matters are, some of them are um, in fact um, addressed in, in the bill in one way or another, but perhaps not using the words, like, like using the word piracy. That, that doesn't appear in the bill itself, um, but, but they, could be, they could be dealt with by other measures um, in the bill. And um, so I'm, I'm, I'm also not sure, if, if we may ask um, Advocate Ali maybe just to, to assist on, on how how this will be voted on. Thank you, Chi. Okay, thank you so much. Advocate Ali. Thank you, Chief Person. Chair, the committee should be mindful of the fact that when considering these mandates, we are bound by the bill that's in front of us. If the committee wants to introduce a new amendment, which I'm presuming these uh, provisions will suffice as, we would need to apply to the House for um, special um, uh, permission in order to do that. So 
if these amendments are not contained in the bill that's before the uh, before the committee, we should refrain from considering it. It could lead to to further complications um, down the line, Chair. Thank you. Thank you so much. Honourable members, your take. I take it that we agree then with the uh, uh, advocate. Oh, Honorable Dango. I was just going to say that, what you just said, Chairperson. Okay. Any contrary view, Honorable Members? Does it matter no if raise a contribute, Chair? Sorry? I'm just asking Tang Cheek if it really matters if you raise a contribute. Yeah, we are in the process of uh, uh, legislation here, Honorable President. Okay, Honorable Members, uh, with that, uh, can we then go to the next uh, bill? Um, Mr. Bazia, if you can uh, fly, or is there anything that we need to do on this bill that we've, that we've just uh, dealt with? Uh, we have to adopt it as a whole, uh, Mr. Samara. Uh, Advocate Samara. Chair, we have done so that, by that adopting. We done it clause by clause, uh, do we have to now adopt the whole bill or we'll do that when we deal with the e list? Yes, uh, uh, yes, Chair, that's correct. By adopting clause by clause, we have implied that um, the entire um, um, uh, the yeah. entire list of proposed amendments have been agreed to, but the committee can always take it a step further by uh, adopting the e-list once it's uh, compiled. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much. Three, uh, again, if, we can, if we can maybe, I think it's just the cover page maybe um, that we need to adopt. Sorry? I think it's just the cover page that we need to adopt. Oh, on the copyright amendment, please? Yes, Chief. Which ones are those there? Yeah. Just the cover page, the actual cover page, G, the first page. Oh, the first page. The cover page. But I didn't hear properly, Miss Matic. Can you please uh, clarify me? Uh, it's just the, the, the actual cover page, G, with the bull number and the bull name. Oh, okay. Can you fly to it, uh, Mr. Bazia? The bill. There you go. Can I put the cover page on our members? Those in favor, uh, you know, please raise your hand and support. Solomons. Yes, thank you. Um, those provinces that have voted in favor of the cover page are as follows Gauteng, Northwest, Northern Cape, Free State, Eastern Cape, and Lumpopo. Thank you so much. Can you please lower your hands, honorable members? Those who are voting against the cover page. We have one from the Western Cape Chief. Thank you so much. Please lower your hand. Okay. Uh, those who are abstaining, please uh, raise your hand. Those who are abstaining, please raise your hand. Okay. Um, three abstentions are captured as follows um, for Malanga and KZN, and then we note the abstention from Anjibu Matabula. Thank you so much. Uh, please uh, lower your hand, honorable members. Any other page, uh, Ms. Solomon? And no, that was all to you. Oh, okay. Thank you so much. Um, can we then go to the performance protections amendment bill? We have to break for lunch, please. We agree that at uh, half past. 
half past one to half past uh, two. Thank you so much. Um, Mr. Bazian. So much. Uh, can we then go to advocate on clause one definition? Thank you, Chi. And if you will allow me on this to, to go definition by definition. Um, so just a, there was just a general comment um, relating to certain definitions not corresponding with the international treaties. So it's a broad, a broad comment, not specifically on, on um, um, uh, amendments to, to a definition. Um, and um, so the, the comments that we have is, is that unfortunately it wasn't clear what the concerns were with these specific definitions that were that were mentioned. But in general, we can confirm that they do in fact, fact comply with the treaties. Um, there were from, from other provinces specific proposals in respect of, of most of the definitions mentioned here, but I will then deal with those um, when we get to them. So, so Chair, just the, the first, um, I'm, I'm not sure if, if it is something to be voted on because it was just a, a general comment um, and not so much proposals for amendments, but uh, we would not recommend any amendments based on treaty alignment. Thank you, Chair. Thank you so much. Uh, any comments uh, from your side, uh, DDG? Thank you, Chair. I, I, we agree with the principle, Chair, and that um, the definitions do align to the treaties, but um, they will not be um, amended on the basis of language or text from the treaties. Thank you. Thank you so much. Can we then go to broadcasts, uh, Advocate? Honorable Chair? Yes, sir. Uh, you can go Sorry, ahead. Uh, Yes. Thank you, Chairperson. I did have my hand up. Chairperson, just something that I'd like to just note, um, just for general, uh, you know, go, going forward within our legislative process, and I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to filibuster, <laughs> but I'm picking up a frustration on the side of, of advocate for the river that sometimes the, the, um, the responses or the negotiating mandates in the provinces are defective and unusual and and I think uh, advocate for the mover said earlier that they they're not what they used to and I'm just picking it up as a recurring theme throughout our discussions this morning just going forward do you think it might be a a, a good um, a good idea for the advocates and her team maybe to engage with the provinces not on this bill this the this, this is not done but maybe on future ones just to engage in terms of the kind of form and nature, not content, obviously, but um, or perhaps an idea of content, so that the submissions that come back from the provinces are clear, you know, um, clear, unambiguous, and easy for the for the for the, the the legal advisory team in Parliament to understand, so that they can not have to draw inferences and that sort of thing. It's clear and it's it's hundred percent easy to work with perhaps a workshop or something like that. I just want to, before I forgot it, I just wanted to put that in there that that might be a, a good idea going forward with all the other legislation we're dealing with as a select committee, um, just across the board. Thank you, Chairperson. Thank you so much, uh, uh, Honorable uh, Tim. Uh, Honorable Tamu? Chairperson, it's not often that I agree with the absentee province. However, I think it does make sense that we need such a workshop. Uh, in the light of experience. Thank you. Thank you very much. Maybe that that will go for the procedure as well of dealing with the legislation, uh, all types of legislation, so what procedures, so that we're clear uh, in terms of procedure, whether it's section 75, uh, section 64, section uh, uh, 76, section 77. So, Perhaps maybe not only for us as this committee, maybe for the entire NCOP, because uh, it could be that uh, also there may be challenges with regard to the understanding of uh, 
a procedure so that we don't bog down on procedures in future when we deal with legislation or uh, the, the procedures to be followed. Uh, besides this, the substantiveness or the content, but just the procedures, uh, perhaps if we, we could uh, uh, recommend that as well uh, for maybe at the beginning, maybe it's the uh, end of the term, by the way, but uh, uh, even at the beginning of uh, uh, or towards the end of this year, or um, even for the seventh parliament for that net, so that they, there's clarity on, on, on uh, together with the rules um, that govern the, the legislation. Um, Honorable team, is it the old hand? No, Chairperson, it's a new one. I just wanted to correct, uh, correct Honorable Dangle. I'm not from the absent province, I'm from the defective mandate province. Thank you. <laughs> Noted. Um, and I must, let's say, uh, quickly move uh, to to broadcast uh, advocate. Uh, thank you, Chairperson. <clears throat> Chair, from, from the Free State, there was a proposal for the deletion of the words wire. Um, and um, on that, we can just say we've we've actually that was a proposal also in in, in the in the National Assembly process. And um, we consulted with um, actual members of the public um, organizations who deal with broadcasting. And the indication was that wire may be used, even though it is not currently um, something subject to licensing. Um, so, so that would not be recommended. But from Gauteng, there was also a proposal that either broadcast the definition that amends the current definition of broadcast be deleted or that different wording be used. And um, I'll hand over to the department uh, because they, from their side, they they um, uh, would be, are proposing that, in fact, it be deleted. Uh, if I may hand to the department on that. Thank you, Jane. Thank you so much. Uh, did you cheat or come on, um, thank you, thank you, Chair. We we have already, in a way, dealt with this um, on the other bill when we're discussing broadcast, and yeah. we accepted the recommendation from Hao Deng uh, to retain the, the definition that is in the ad because of the um, of the the fact that um, there were other unintended consequences raised by provinces in terms of. Um, there might be other scope uh, of broadcasting or a transmission that may be omitted by the current uh, definition. And also to say some of the wording used in the current uh, definition in the bill are not clear, although we are trying to align with the treaty. So we, we did um, say that the amendment can be um, removed and then uh, we retain what is in the in the act. So we did have a discussion about this before. Thank you. Thank you so much. And our members, can we then vote uh, on this of broadcast that it be deleted and be retaining the current act? Those in favor, please raise your hand. Those in favor, please raise your hand. Do we still have everybody on the platform? Okay. Ms. Madia. Um, thank you, Chairperson. Um, are those in favor as follows um, for Eastern Cape on Bohai, for Northwest on the Lansman. For Free State, Honorable Mashuri, <clears throat> for Limpopo, Honorable Mamarhani, for Northern Cape, Honorable Mwemang, and for Houting, Honorable Dango. Thank you so much. Please lower your hand, Honorable Members. Those against, please uh, raise your hand. Against this one for um, Western Cape, Honorable Lund. Thank you, Honorable Lund. Please lower your hand. Those who are abstaining, please raise your hand. Those who are abstaining, please raise your hand. Okay. Three abstentions are captured as follows. Um, 
Ook is hier een ander wil praat is het, um, om voor mijn lange ander wil pas af en die noodt die abstention of ander wil met de boel. Thank you so much. Please lower your hands, honorable members. The next one, uh, Mr. Pazia, of the broadcast. I think it's communication to the public, advocate. Thank you. Thank you, Chairperson. Yes, uh, there was a proposal from Gauteng to, to amend the definition of communication to the public in relation to um, the, the the treaty. But, uh, and I'll, I'll hand over to the department with, with your permission, the the proposed amendment was not uh, recommended because it, it already, the definition as it is now in the bill is aligned uh, to the treaty. But if I may, may hand to the department on, on that. Thank you, Chair. Thank you so much. Uh, Thank you, Chair. We we agree with the uh, um, the comment by the advocate. the The substantive uh, suggestion on the command it was not uh, substantiated in terms of what is the main main issue with the with the definition. Uh, in terms of treaty align, alignment, the definition is aligned to the treaty, and we recommend from the TTIC that it be retained in the bill without any amendment. Thank you. Thank you so much. We are now voting on that uh, close uh, honorable members. Um, those in favor of uh, that the proposed amendment is not recommended, please uh, raise your hand. Uh, Ms. Solomon. Um, thank you, Chief Person. Um, in favor is as follows um, for Northwest, Honorable Lansman, for Free State, Honorable Mashori, for Northern Cape, Honorable Moimang, for Eastern Cape, Honorable Chai, for Gauteng, Honorable Tango, and for Limpopo, Honorable Mamarhani. Thank you very much. Can we please lower our hands, uh, Honorable Members? Thank you so much. So the voting against, please uh, raise your hand. Chair, is one against um, for Western Cape, Honorable Land. Thank you so much. Those who are abstaining, please raise your hand. And those who are abstaining, please raise your hand. Um, G abstentions are, are captured as follows for um for Malanga Honorable Pashov, who case it in Honorable Pratusev, and we note the abstention of Honorable Matabola. Thank you so much. Please uh, lower your hands, honorable members. Honorable Matabola, please lower your hand. Thank you so much. The next one is a uh, copyright. Management information, sound recording, technological protection measures, and technological protection measures, circumvention device, uh, referring to copyright act. Uh, advocate. Thank you, Chairperson. The concern raised here was that these um, definitions, copyright management information, sound recording, technological protection measure, and the circumvention device definition would all refer to the Copyright Act. So in other words, the definition as contained in the Copyright Act. And the proposal was that it should rather just be included in the Performance Protection um, Act. Um, although this can be done, it would not be recommended. And the reason for that is that the, the, these two acts are very interlinked and you run the risk of one act being amended, but the other not. Um, if, if, for instance, um, another intellectual property law um, amends the Copyright Act and at that point in time, they don't think about the Performance Protection Act. It is possible that you will have a situation where these two acts will have different definitions. And it is because of that that the the one act then refers to the other. And because they are so interlinked, um, that will work in practice. So from our side, it's not it's not recommended that um, the specific definitions be included in the 
Performance Protection Amendment Bill, but that they rather refer to the Copyright Act. Thank you, Chief. Thank you so much. Uh, DG, Dr. Masoto. Thank you, Chair. We, we, we concur with that uh, comment. Thank you. Thank you so much. Honourable members will now be voting uh, that the proposed amendment is not recommended. Those who agree or in favour, please uh, raise your hand. Ms. Salomons. Yes, thank you, Chairperson. Um, in favour, we have for Free State, Honourable Mashuri, for Limpopo, Honourable Namarahani, for Northwest, Honourable Lansman, for Gauteng, Honourable Dango, for Eastern Cape, Honourable Chai, and for Northern Cape, Honourable Moimang. Thank you very much. Please lower your hands, Honourable Members. Honourable Lansman, please lower your hand. Those who are against, please uh, raise your hand. Three against. Mm -hmm. We have one for Western Cape on the land. Thank you so much. Those who are abstaining, please raise your hand. Those who are abstaining, please raise your hand. Okay. Thanks, Jay. Um, um, abstentions are, are, are captured as follows. Humpo Balanga, Honorable Bashoff, for KZN, Honorable Bradesif, and we note the abstention of Honorable Matabula. Thank you so much. Please lower your hand, Honorable Members. Thank you so much. <clears throat> uh, we, Mr. Bazia, can you move to the next one? Uh, Advocate, uh, performer. Thank you, Chairperson. In respect of performer, the definition of performer, and this was also discussed when we did the Copyright Amendment Bill, there was proposals for um, it to be made very clear that extras and ancillary participants or incidental participants were not included in the definition of performer. And um, the the discussion that we had on the copyright was that although this, this is not necessary, it is something that can be added. It will not necessarily negatively affect the definition. The other proposal was that the, the definition should actually be broadened. Um, but that is that is not recommended because it is aligned uh, to international treaties. It is aligned to the current existing law. So the proposal for amendment here in respect of performer is simply to add the words there in blue to make it very clear that performer for purposes of this um, Performance Protection Act does not include extras ancillary participants or incidental participants. Thank you, Chi. Thank you so much. Dr. Masoja. Thank you, Chair. As, as we had uh, discussed this in the previous bill, um, we concur with the with the comments by the advocate. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, honorable members, those who agree with the responses, please uh, raise your hand. Those who vote in favor, please raise your hand. Ms. Solomons. Uh, thank you, Chairperson. Um, those in favor um, of the responses and the proposed amendments are as follows. For Eastern Cape, Honorable Hai. For Free State, Honorable Mashodi. For Limpopo, Honorable Mamrahani. For Gauteng, Honorable Dango. For Northern Cape, Honorable Moimang. And for Northwest, Honorable Lansman. Thank you so much. Can we please lower hands, uh, Honorable Members? Those who are voting against, please raise your hand. Chile is one against from for the Western Cape on the land. Thank you so much. Please lower your hand on our blunt. Thank you. Those who are abstaining, please raise your hand. 
those are abstaining, please raise your hand. Okay. Um, thanks, Tree. Um, the abstentions are captured as follows. We pay it in, Honorable Pratisev, Umpumalanga, Honorable Pashov, and we note the abstention of Honorable Matabola. Thank you so much. Please lower your hands, Honorable Members. Do we, uh, Mr. Bazia, can you please uh, move up? Next one, uh, advocate is producer. Thank you, Chairperson. In respect of producer, the proposal was um, relating to legal persons. In other words, do, do, would the word producer include legal persons? So the proposals made for amendments related to that. And from our side, it's, it's not recommended to make any changes on that regard because uh, our Interpretation Act indicates that person includes juristic as well as natural persons. So we draft in, in the singular when we draft. We try our best way possible to draft in the singular. So there's no need to add words like any or um, to add entity. Those are not necessary. It is provided for by our Interpretation Act. And the word person for producer will thus include um, whether it's a natural person or a legal person uh, or even a combination of those will all be covered by the definition for producer. Thank you, Chair. Thank you so much. Did you see? Thank you, Chair. We, we, we are of the same view as well because it's already um, legally defined in that manner. Thank you. Thank you so much. Honorable members, propose that uh, the recommendation should not be recommended. Those who agree, please uh, raise your hands. Those in favor, please raise your hand. Solomons. Yes, she. Um, thank you, Chi. Um, those in favor, um, the we have um for Houting, Honorable Dango for Eastern Cape, Honorable Hai for Northern Cape, Honorable Moimang for Free State, Honorable Mashori, for Lumpopo, Honorable Mamarahani, and for Northwest Honorable Lansman. Thank you so much. Can we please lower hands, honorable members? Thank you. Those who are voting against, please raise your hand. Okay, um, three against is captured as follows for the Western Cape on the line. Thank you so much. If you can uh, lower your hand, uh, honorable uh, launch. Thank you so much. Those who are abstaining, uh, please raise your hand. Um, G, um, abstentions are, are captured as follows. Form Pumalanga, Honorable Pashov, who carries it in, Honorable Bratisev, and we note the abstention of Honorable Matabula. Thank you so much. Please lower your hands, Honorable Members. Protest, please lower your hand. Thank you, uh, Mr. Bazia. Can you move up? Uh, advocate reproduction. Thank you, Chairperson. Um, Chair, um, I, I just must apologize first. I see under reproduction my line here, there's actually two definitions being discussed. So if you would allow me, I'm just going to, to, to speak to reproduction and if we can then come back to sound recording because there should have been a line uh, with the word sound recording um, in between the two oh, okay. free state comments. Yeah. So in respect of reproduction, there was a proposal for the words the whole or a part of to be included um, in respect of audiovisual works. So if I can maybe hand to the um, department because this is a policy matter. Thank you, Chi. Thank you so much. Um, uh, thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chair. In terms of the, the definition, it was not really clear in terms of um, the proposal. But then when we looked at the wording uh, to be included, we thought and we, we, we were of the view it, it may have unintended consequences to just insert those wording uh, in, that, in that fashion. 
So in that, um, because of that, the amendment is not recommended. Thank you, Chair. Thank you so much. The proposal is not uh, recommended. Honorable members, those who agree, please uh, raise your hand. Solomons. Um, thank you, Chairperson. Um, um, those in uh, favor, we've captured it as follows. Um, for Eastern Cape, Honorable Hai, for Northwest, Honorable Lansman, for Gauteng, Honorable Dango, for Lompopo, Honorable Mamrahani, for Free State, Honorable Mashori, and for Northern Cape, Honorable Moimang. Thank you so much. Please lower your hands, uh, Honorable Members. Honorable Lansman, please lower your hand. Thank you. Those against, please raise your hand. Three against is one for Western Cape, Honorable Lant. Okay. Those abstaining, please raise your hand. Um, thanks, Shri. Um, um, abstentions are captured as follows. For Mpumalanga, Honorable Bashok, for KZN, Honorable Bratiset, and we note the abstention of Honorable Matabola. Thank you so much. Please lower your hands, Honorable Members. Thank you so much. We then go to sound recording. Uh, advocate. Thank you, Chairperson. In respect of sound recording, I, I again would like to hand over to the department because it's policy related, but maybe just to indicate that um, the proposal was um, from the Free State to, to substitute the words um, does not include a soundtrack associated with audiovisual fixation to rather describe that um, in respect of subsequent incorporation of sound recordings and from the Northwest to, to say that um, it should be clear that pre-existing sound recordings are not affected. So if I may hand just to the department on these two issues. Thank you, Chair. Thank you so much. DDG. On, on, on the sound recording definition, Chair, we, we, we did in, um, ensure that there was alignment to the, the treaty. And although the wording in terms of the text um, is not exact, but we did um, ensure that the, the way that it is being applied in the treaty is taken into consideration. The, on the one way there is a um, proposal around the audiovisual, our view on that one was that it, it appeared as um, a substantive proposal being, being proposed in a definition. And um, similar to the other comment about the um, unintended consequences, we are of the view that as it is now, um, it should be retained and that the proposed amendment not be um, considered. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, the proposal is that uh, the proposed amendment be not uh, recommended. Those who agree, please uh, raise your hands. Those voting in favor of not uh, recommending, please raise your hands. Ms. Solomons. Yes, Jay. Um, those in favor, we have captured it as follows for um, Eastern Cape Honorable High, um, for Northwest Honorable Lansman, for Free State Honorable Mashori, for Limpopo Honorable Mamrahani, for Northern Cape Honorable Moimang. I did see Mr. Dango's hand for Gauteng, but at the, at the, at the, there we go. Yeah. My device seems to be playing games with me today. Thank you. Thank you. And okay. so, so yes, Jay. So <clears throat> yeah, so we 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 know that the the um the the vote of um honourable Dango for Hating as well. Thank you so much. Let's please lower our hands, honourable uh, members. Please lower our hands. Those who are voting against, please raise your hand. Three against, we have one for Western Cape, Honorable Lund. Thank you so much. 
those uh, abstaining, please raise your hand. Okay, um, abstentions are captured as follows. Um, for Mpumalanga, Honorable Bashok, for KZN, Honorable Rafasif, and we note the abstention of Honorable Matabula. Thank you very much. Um, members, it's uh, almost uh, half past one. Uh, we're left with the uh, two uh, flawed, uh, definition proposals from provinces on technological protection measures and uh, also on royalty. Uh, we will come back then on those two and also vote then for uh, close one. Uh, I suggest that we, we pray for lunch unless you want us to finish the uh, close one. On a proposal. Sorry, that's a legacy hand. Okay, thank you so much. Let, 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 let us let us finish close one. Let's, let's break. Sorry. Oh, I thought we should just finish close one. No, let, let's break for lunch. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, and then we'll, we'll come back. Yeah, it, we'll come back at half past two. So. Thank you so much. The meeting is at the end for now. I was kicked out, Chair.
Recording stopped.
Good afternoon, honorable members. Are we all back? Okay. I'm back, Chair. Thank you. Thank you so much. Honorable Mamarakhane, Honorable Lund, Honorable Monarch. Present. Dango. I'm back, Jefferson. I'm back, Che. Thank you. Honorable team. I'm back. I'm back. Okay. Honorable team. Yeah, Jefferson. Okay. Uh, so a message from Honorable Bosch. Uh, she said she would join once uh, she's done with the uh, motion. Uh, she wrote on the chart. Okay. Uh, Mr. Bazia, can you please uh, flight the uh, uh, performance protection? Recording in progress. I think we will we to go to technological protection measures. Ne? Is that correct? Oh, okay. Let, let me hand over to Advocate and uh, DDG. Thank you, Chairperson. Um, Chair, we also discussed this exact same definition um, when we did the copyright amendment bill. Um, the proposals was in respect of um, aligning it with the with the treaties, the three step test, and to make sure that there's sufficient protection. And um, the response that we had in, on the copyright amendment bill is the same as we have, have now. These definitions have been very carefully crafted to make uh, to ensure a, a balance between the rights of copyright owners and users. Um, I referred the committee when we did with the copyright amendment bill to um, the situation in America where they have very strict definitions around this and they have um, severe challenges on, on certain freedoms, um, the, the ability to, to take your product to any any person to, to, to fix it for you. Like if, if I want to take my, my vehicle to a mechanic down the street versus having to be forced to take it to the manufacturer to repair. So because of all of those things, the recommendation from our side is that the current definitions in the bill um, are in fact um, balanced, uh, very, very carefully considered and should be retained. Um, thank you, Chair. Um, I, I think that the, the department may want to add to that. Thanks. Thank you so much. Uh, DDG. Thank you, Chairperson. Um, the advocate has uh, uh, attended to the issues that we discussed previously, and we also recommend no amendments. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Honorable members, can we then vote uh, that the, the recommendation that no uh, amendment uh, to the wording of the definition recommended? Those in favor of that, please uh, raise your hand. May I proceed, Chair? Yes, please. Um, Chair, those um, um, those that have voted in favor of um, <clears throat> accepting the um, proposals as follows um, for Northwest, Honorable Lansman, for Hauteng, Honorable Dango, for Northern Cape, Honorable Moimang, for Free State, Honorable Mashori, for Eastern Cape, Honorable Hai, and for Nampopo, Honorable Mamrahani. Okay. Can we please uh, lower our hands, uh, Honorable Members? Honorable Lund? Oh, you're voting oh, those who are voting against, please uh, raise your hand. We have, we have one against, Honorable Lund, for Western Cape. Thank you so much. 
If you can, okay. Uh, those who are abstaining, please raise your hand. Those who are abstaining, please raise your hand. Chief, for now we have one. Um, um, for Casey on the board, about to say. Okay, noted. I see Honorable Matibula is not on the platform. Honorable Tafin is also not on the platform. Honorable Bosov also not on the platform. Okay, thank you very much. Um, we now move. Should we just try to call him to find out where they are, Chief? I'm In not sure whether they can. Maybe we, you, you, can, you, you can check. Uh, um, maybe let's wait for maybe two minutes. Because you are also responsible for counting the votes. Let's let's allow two minutes just to check uh, members who have not uh, logged in yet. Um, yeah, I'm calling Honorable Bashoff and Honorable Matagula. There's no answer. But I see that there is a, um, a message from Honorable Tafini to say that there's a network challenge because she and she's on a and because of that she's on her way to Parliament. I think that was a that message was sent long time ago. I also saw it in the chat. Uh, so she's supposed to be in Parliament by now. That was before we even break uh, for lunch. Um, you want to try again? Um, we'll do change. No, please. Chair, I've been kicked out. See? I have network problems. If I'm kicked out, please check on me. Oh, okay. Uh, we'll do that. Are you succeeding, uh, Ms. Solomon? Okay, Chi, Ms. Boshoff has actually indicated that she's in. She did. She said that she did send a message to say that she was going to be a little bit late joining, but she has since joined the platform. Um, oh. I, um, I'm, I'm busy texting Ms. Tafini now. She's getting back to me. I haven't been able to get a hold of Ms. Matabula, but we can proceed, Chi. Okay, thanks. Okay. Um, let, we're moving now to uh, royalty. Uh, advocate Faname. Thank you, Chairperson. There, there is a proposal for um, a definition um, on, on royalty, but um, it is possible that the mandates got mixed up uh, because royalty plays a bigger role in the copyright amendment bill and has been dealt with there. 
Um, there's nothing in the Act or the Performance Protection Amendment Bill that um, defines, the, there's no definition for royalty, it's not in any of the clauses, not in Clause 1, um, and we would not recommend that any definition be added. Uh, royalty has a has a dictionary definition in, in the Performance Protection Amend uh, Act uh, as, as such. Um, I'm not sure if the Department will want to add anything, but it's not, we would not recommend any amendment here. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, we, we agree with the advocate and also to say, even in the treaty uh, where royalty is used um, as a wording, it is not defined. Thank you. Thank you so much. Honourable members, can we then vote uh, in favour of uh, that uh, the definition is not recommended, the proposed amendment to a definition is recommended, those who agree with that. Please uh, raise your hand. May I proceed, Chair? Yes, please. Um, Chair, those who have voted in agreement for Northwest, Honorable Lansman, for, um, Lim for Limpopo, Honorable Mamrahani, for Houting, Honorable Dango, for Free State, Honorable Mashori, for Northern Cape Honorable Weimang and for Eastern Cape Honorable Hai. Okay, thank you so much. Please uh, lower your hands, honorable members. Those who are voting against, oh, let's deal with it. Panorama Okay, over to you, uh, Ms. Solomon. Okay, there's one against for Nibble Mamarhani. Are you, are you raising your hand against? Okay, for um, this wonderful against for um, Western Cape Honorable Lanchi. Okay, those who are abstaining, please raise your hand. Those who are abstaining, please raise your hand. Solomon. Yes, um, yes, the abstentions are captured as follows for um, KZN, um, on, Honorable Gladysif, and for Mpumalanga, Honorable Bashoff. Okay, thank you so much. Please lower your hand, Honorable Members. Okay, we now, Honorable Members, will be voting for Clause 1. Uh, those in favor of adoption of Clause 1, please raise your hand. Um, Ms. Solomons. Um, thank you, Chairperson. Um, those provinces that have voted in favour of Clause 1 with the proposed amendments are as follows. Um, for Eastern Cape, Honorable, uh, for Eastern Cape, Northern Cape, Northwest, Gauteng, Free State, Limpopo. Thank you so much. Honorable members, can you please lower your hands? Those who voting against the uh, adoption of uh, clause one, please raise your hand. A cheer against, we have the Western Cape. Thank you so much. Those who are abstaining, please uh, raise your hand. Those who are abstaining, please raise your hands. Um, Chair, abstentions are captured as follows for um, um, we've got Mpumalanga and KZN. Thank you so much. Then we go to section or clause two, uh, section three. Uh, over to you, uh, advocate. Thank you, Chair. Chair, the proposals on this um, clause two. Um, mainly re related to three aspects. The, the one is in respect of wording of a treaty and mention was made of that um, protection should be granted based on nationality, place of first fixation or simultaneous publication criteria. 
Now, we could not find this wording in the applicable treaties. Um, it may be in a treaty that is not specifically applicable to, to performers, but also we need to keep in mind that it is not necessary to use the exact words of a treaty as long as it is necessary, as long as the, the wording that is there complies with what the treaty requires, then that would be sufficient. And the specific wording that are given, in fact, has the word all, which means only one of those would be required in any event. And we have it as, um, I think our bill is on, on the, the um, area where it was first fixed. The other proposal re yeah, related to the use of equitable remuneration and whether that uh, would be sufficient, and then also the role between equitable remuneration and exclusive rights, and whether um, rights are being taken away or not. Chair, if I may on that, all of those aspects actually just give over to the department, because a number of these things um, speak to policy, and of course on the treaty they will also be better able to speak. Thank you, Chair. Thank you so much, uh, Advocate. Uh, Thomas Sochan. Uh, thank you, Chair. On, on, the, on the point around laws two and section three, we agree with the advocate. Um, the, 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 the reference to the treaty was not clear. Uh, we could not find that provision, so we agree with that. And also the right seems to be talking more to producers than to performers. And on the Equ equ equitable remuneration. We think that um, in the broader scheme, in terms of ensuring that modes of remuneration are addressed, in the uh, Performance Protection Amendment Bill, there has been um, consideration in terms of alignment with the treaties to allow for the equitable remuneration. So we think that um, it is an important aspect that has been considered in the bill as well. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, honorable members, we'll then vote uh, those who are in favor of the explanation uh, by the department and the CLSO. Please raise your hand. Solomon. Um. <clears throat> Thank you, Chi. Um, those who have voted in favor for Free State, we've got Honorable Mashori. Um, for Hunting, we've got Honorable Dango. For um, Northern Cape, we've got Honorable Mwemang. For Northwest, we've got Honorable Lanspan. From Fulham Popa, we've got Honorable Mamrahani. And for Eastern Cape, we've got Honorable Kai. Thank you so much. Can we please lower our hands, Honorable Members? Thank you. Those voting against, please uh, raise your hand. Chair, against, we have Honorable Lund for the Western Cape. Thank you so much. Those who are abstaining, please raise your hand. Um, she abstentions are captured as follows um, for, um, for Milanko, Honorable Bashop, for KZN, Honorable Pratusif, and we note the abstention of Honorable Matabula. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, Mr. Baziak, oh, can you move up? The next clause. Uh, clause three, uh, section three A. Chair, we still need to listen. Uh, apologies, Chair, we still need to vote on clause two, Chair. Oh, sorry. Thank you for keeping on reminding me. Uh, Robert Tim. Oh, okay. Uh, can we then go back to clause uh, two? Those who are voting in favor of clause two, please uh, raise your hand. May I proceed, Chair? Yes, please. Okay, Chair, um, those provinces that have voted in favor of clause two without amendments are as follows. Gauteng, Northern Cape, Northwest, Free State, Eastern Cape, and Limpopo. 
Thank you so much. Uh, honorable members, please let's lower our hands. Those who are voting against the adoption of the clause two, please raise your hand. Those voting against, yeah, okay. Um, three against, we have the Western Cape. Thank you so much. If you can lower your hand, the uh, Honorable uh, Lord, please. Thank you. Those who are abstaining from the vote. Those who are abstaining, please raise your hand. Um, thank you, Chair members. Um, the abstentions are captured as follows. Um, there's abstentions no, um, captured from KZN um, and Pumalanga, and we note the abstention of Andrew Matabula. Thank you so much. We, we then go to clause three, section A and uh, three, uh, section three A and three B. Uh, over to you, advocate. Thank you, Chair. If you will allow me to first deal with section three A, and then we can come okay. back to section three B. Chair, okay. the main concern on section 3A is in respect of the ministerial, this, not just discretion, but empowering the minister to prescribe uh, certain standards for contracts. And um, in the document that you have, we, we've divided it into two, but it, they all actually still deal with the same thing, where there's a proposal for amendments in order to make it clear what a contract must deal with rather than have it prescribed um, by the minister. And the proposal that we have is that in, it, it's necessary, first of all, to have the minister prescribe certain aspects, simply because, again, as I've said before, it deals with uh, protection of vulnerable parties to the contract. Um, the proposal that we do make is similar to the one before. And again, there is the option, the one referring still to contractual terms and the other one referring to standard elements for a contract and to then make sure that it's the rights or protection afforded by the Act and the Copyright Act that are being prescribed. So it can't be broader than what is in, in the Acts. And that is then made very clear in the proposals that we have. So again, Chair, there's, there's two options um, for, for the committee to, to, to decide on rather than um, deleting that um, empowering provision and, and adding it somewhere else in, in the section. To, to say let's let's retain that empowering provision, but we make it very clear what it is that the minister can and, and cannot prescribe. Uh, Jay, that is the one aspect. I just want to go down because there's something else as well. Um, there was also a concern about a reversion right and uh, whether that should in fact be included. And um, the, just from our side to say, if, if the concern is that rights uh, would be affected retrospectively, we can confirm that that is not the operation. It will be uh, going forward. Um, so, Chair, I think the department might also want to, want to add to that. Uh, but like I say, the main things were the, the ministerial empower, empowering provision in respect of regulations. And there we are pro proposing a, um, an amendment and there's an option again for, for the committee to choose from between the terms being prescribed or elements of a contract being prescribed. Um, and then, of course, to, to make sure that that's limited to what the Act provides. And then the reversion right. Chair, if I might just in, in that respect hand to the department to, to speak to that. Thank you so much. DBG. Thank you, Chair. Um, the provisions are similar to the ones in the Copyright Amendment Bill in terms of the terms of contracts. It's also about uh, protection of performers, ensuring that uh, those who are contracting are aware of the minimum rights that affect them. And then on the reversion right, it's the same as uh, in the Copyright Amendment Bill because it talks to the musical works um, in, the, in terms of the sound recordings, it's, uh, it's a similar right uh, as in the copyright, and we uh, recommend that it be retained in the, in the bill. Thank you. Thank you so much. Honorable members. We
we have to choose between the two. So, so are you saying these uh, two, the, the blue ones, uh, advocate are similar to the blue ones that were in the copyright? Yes, Chair. So the wording might be slightly different because it's now in a different section, but the, yeah. the intent remains. The one, both of them will refer to, to limiting it to rights from the Act, but of course we know add the Copyright Act to this as well. Um, because it's both performance protection and the Copyright Act that provide protection to performers. Um, and then the one focuses on terms and the other one takes away even that word um, and, and simply refers to elements. Um, and the, the one that was chosen in the Copyright Amendment Bill is the second option, the elements one. Um, yeah. Because the, the, the two acts work together, unless there is comp compulsory reasons to go with the first one, I would recommend that we follow that example yes. and, and go with the second one for, for that um, consistency between the, between the two. Thank you, Jim. Yeah, that's why I'm, re I'm asking again so that there's no contradiction uh, between the two. Uh, uh, and I remember as we then go for the second one, Akrit. Agreed. Okay. We then vote, uh, honorable members, uh, for section uh, three. Those in favor uh, of the proposal, please uh, raise your hand. Proposed amendment. Chair, may uh, I proceed? Yes, please. Yes, Chair. Um, those who have voted in favor for Northwest, Honorable Lanspan, Kharteng, Honorable Dango, for Lampopo, Honorable Mamadahani, for Northern Cape, Honorable Muimang, for Fisek, Honorable Mashodi, and for Eastern Cape, Honorable Khan. Thank you very much. Can we please uh, lower hands, uh, Honorable Members? Honorable Mashuri, please lower hand. Thank you. Those who are voting against the amendment, your proposed amendments. Chair, we have one from the Western Cape, um, from the Western Cape, Honorable Lant. Thank you so much. Those who are abstaining, please uh, raise your hands. The abstentions are captured as follows. Bukhaz um, Eden, Honorable Bratisek, Pumpumalanga, Honorable Boshoff, and we note the abstention of Honorable Matavola. Thank you so much. Please lower your hand, Honorable Members. Sebazia, um, can we go to section uh, B, 3, 3B, and uh, hand over to uh, Advocate? Thank you, Chair. Chair, in respect of Section 3B, there's actually not really an amendment proposed to the Performance Protection Amendment Bill. It was, in fact, dealt with under the Copyright Amendment Bill, where the proposal was for Section 8A in the Copyright Amendment Bill to be deleted. But it was mentioned in the Performance Protection Mandates, and, and that's why we thought to include it here. But like I said, there's no proposal for an amendment to the Performance Protection Act, and the vote has already been taken on the Copyright Amendment Bill in respect of Section 8A. Um, so I'm, I'm not sure that it's necessary to vote on these because it's not for this bill, um, but we did we did think it prudent to, to bring that uh, to your attention, that these were included in the Performance Protection Amendment Bill mandates as well. Okay, so... It, it will automatically be in the performance protection amendment B, or not? Uh, Chair, the, the, the concern, the request was to delete something from the copyright yeah. amendment bill. So the, the committee has already voted on that. So so that's not something that will that will change now. It has okay. already been been voted on. Yes. Yeah. No, I agree with you. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Can you move up uh, then, uh, uh, Mr. Pazia? to go to the next clause, clause four. Chair, we still need to vote on clause three, Chair. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, can we then vote, uh, honorable members, uh, vote uh, three, those in favor of adoption of vote. So I say vote three, clause three. Okay. 
Hey, uh, Solomon, you can go ahead. Um, thank you, Chairperson. Um, Chair, those provinces that have voted in, 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 <clears throat> in support of Clause 3 with the proposed amendments are as follows. Gauteng, Northern Cape, Free State, Northwest, Limpopo, and Eastern Cape. Thank you so much. Can we please lower our hands, honorable members? Honorable Masodi, please lower your hand. Those who are voting against the adoption clause three, please raise your hand. Chief is one for the Western Cape. Thank you so much. Those who are abstaining, please raise your hand. Those who are abstaining, please raise your hand. Over to you, Ms. Matthew. Yes, Julie, there's two abstentions from Tamalanga and KZN. Thank you so much. Please, the lower hand, now remember. Um, clause 4, Section 5, uh, Advocates and uh, DBG. Thank you, Chairperson. Um, Chair, the first couple of, of, of proposals are actually also um, suited more to the Copyright Amendment Bill because they deal with reporting requirements, which are in the Copyright Amendment Bill, not in the performance protection. Um, so there's no um, proposals um, here for, for or, or, or rather there's no recommendations for, for amendments um, because it's, it's not dealt with in, in, this, in this bill at all. Um, there's also a, a proposal in respect of, um, yeah, or, or the, the first, it's, it's definitely all of the things on the Copyright Amendment Bill, but there's also some proposals in respect of um, a one-size-fits-all approach on payment of royalties, um, but the Performance Protection Bill already distinguishes between um, a remuneration and, and royalties. Um, there was also a proposal... Um, in respect of, um, there was a concern in general about Section 5, but it wasn't clear what the concern was because the concerns that were raised did not speak to Section 5. Um, all that Section 5 does is, in fact, just to change the word fixation to the new definition of audiovisual fixation. And um, it added equitable remuneration and it used the correct wording to refer to the Copyright Act. Um, so there's not a, um, the, the, also it added selling or renting out of an original or a copy. And that was not, that was not one of the, the concerns that were raised. So, so we would not um, recommend um, any amendments there either. Um, there was also the issue of uh, registration, but, and, and, and the penalties, but uh, the DTI can also speak to that, the penalties being a deterrent. And there was also a, a, a proposal, um, to to bring in this interplay with section 8a in the copyright amendment bill but that is not necessary the the two will work together um automatically and and the proposal that was made seemed to to to, to muddy the waters a little bit on on how the two will work together then there was lastly also a concern about downgrading of performers rights um, in respect of exclusive rights and remuneration rights. Um, and I think that the department can, can speak to that. So, Chair, on, on this section, we do not recommend any amendments. The proposals are either in respect of the Copyright Amendment Bill or it is not clear uh, what, what the rationale would be for, for the objections that, that were raised uh, because they did not apply to the section. Uh, and the rest the department will, will definitely speak to. Thank you, Chair. Thank you so much, uh, Advocate uh, DDG. Um, thank you, Chair. Um, in terms of the the issues that were raised, uh, mostly on this um, clause um, related to the um, the audiovisual works and the reporting, I think the principle is the same, similar to what we indicated previously um, in terms of the the works um, the performances that are used uh, without um, 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 accountability in terms of ensuring that there is that remuneration to a, a performer. And, um, and on the uh, point about the clubbing or downgrading of the rights, 
uh, exclusive rights to remuneration right. Um, that is not the case. Um, what has occurred in this provision is that certain rights, digital rights were added in terms of the, the, the international treaties to ensure alignment. And um, we, we think that um, it's one area that may require further, in terms of education and, and, and awareness in future, uh, in terms of uh, those issues, because we think that the, 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 the fact that we added digital rights does not, from our perspective, does not translate into them being um, remuneration rights. So we don't think that is the, that is the case. And overall, the point about the equitable remuneration and other forms of remuneration that has been addressed in this uh, in this bill, uh, especially to align with the treaty. So we think that um, most of the issues that are being raised have been um, attended to, and there are no amendments that are recommended. Thank you, Chair. Thank you so much. <clears throat> so section four then is a re is a re section five is therefore retained. In the in the performance protection, is that they understand? Yes, yes, it is, yes, yes. yes okay. Okay. All right. Thanks so much. Those in favor, uh, please uh, raise your hands. Ms. Maria. Um, thanks, Shi. Those in favor is captured as follows. For Eastern Cape, Honorable Hai. For Free State, Honorable Mashuri. For Limpopo, Honorable Mamarahani. For Houting, Honorable Dango. For Northwest, Honorable Lansman. And for Northern Cape, Honorable Moiman. Thank you so much. Those who are voting against, please raise your hand. Can you drop your hands, uh, honorable members, before we go to the those who put against? Honorable Dango? Okay. Um, three against, we have for Western Cape, honorable Lund. Thank you so much. Those who are abstaining, please uh, raise your hands. Those who are abstaining, please raise your hand. Okay, over to you. Yes, Jay, abstention are captured as follows for how thing for former Langa on the Bashop and for KZD on the board of the CF. Thank you so much. Uh, our members, uh, can you please, uh, can we then vote on the close uh, for? Honorable members, those in favor, please uh, raise your hand. Yes, Madia. Yes, thank you, Chairperson. Um, those provinces that are voted in favor of Clause 4 without amendments are as follows Eastern Cape, Northern Cape, Alting, Free State, Limpopo, and Northwest. Thank you so much. Can you please lower your hands, honorable members? Those who are voting against, please raise your hand. Three against, one is pulled from the Western Cape. Okay. Please lower your hand, Honorable uh, Lord. Thank you. Those who are abstaining, please raise your hands. Um, three abstentions are um, captured as follows in Pumalanga and KZN. Thank you very much. I think uh, Honorable uh, Teovula, I don't know where she, she has been kicked out, so I don't see her. The, on the platform. Um, she she actually messaged to say that she was making a statement in our house. She mentioned something about the house, um, but I think oh. she will be joining us. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, Mr. Bazia, can we move to the next clause? Oh, okay. Clause five, uh, honorable members, can we vote on clause five? 
Those in favor, please raise your hand. Solomon. Um, thank you, Chief. Um, Chief, those provinces that have voted in, in support of Clause 5 without amendments are as follows. Um, Northern Cape, Eastern Cape, Northwest, Free State, Limpopo, and Hauteng. Thank you so much. Can you please uh, lower your hands, uh, honorable members? Thank you so much. Those who are voting against, please uh, raise your hand. Those who are voting against adoption of Clause 5. She are voting against Clause 5. We have the Western Cape. Thank you so much. Uh, please lower your hand, uh, Honorable Lund. Thank you. Uh, those who uh, abstain, those who are uh, abstaining, please raise your hand. Thank you. Um, Jay, abstentions are captured as follows, Mpumalanga and KwaZulu-Natal. Thank you so much. Please lower your hands, honorable members. We then go to clause six, section 8D on regulations. Uh, advocate uh, Fanamebe. Okay, um, I think we now need to do clause five, if I'm not, I, I think we skipped one. So four is what we dealt with. Um, clause I, four. I, and that's it. Hey, am I, have I got it wrong? We, yeah, clause, there's a clause five in between, Che. That's the way there's no amendments on. Am I wrong? We, we've just, uh, we've so just voted uh, clause, yeah, just yeah. Voted for clause five. Oh, okay. So then clause um, yeah. uh, six, apologies. Thank you, Che. Um, <laughs> yeah. um, where are we going now with this? There we are. AD. Okay. Uh, Jay, this this is the same situation as before in respect of the minister's empowering provision in respect of prescribing for contractual terms. So um, what we have is again the same proposal that the instead of deleting this uh, because it is something that is very important for the vulnerable parties to a contract that there's rather an amendment to make it clear that the rights that may be prescribed to be included are those that are in the performance protection act and the copyright act and then there's again an option um Mr. Basie, if you can go a little bit down so, so the members can just see both of the, the options. Yes, thank you. So again, it's the one refers to terms and the other one to elements. And then on the same argument for consistency, I would recommend the, the second one be retained. And Jay, that, that's the the, um, the proposals on, on this clause. They all deal with the with the ministerial power to to prescribe in respect of of contracts um i don't know if the department might want to add something to that thank you chair thank you so much edg uh, thank you chair i think advocate has already addressed the matters and the issues around the stand at uh, the minimum contracts have been extensively discussed in the in the platform thank you thank you so much and our members as well explained that for consistency, uh, we'll go for, uh, when we vote we, uh, for or against, we consider the second option. Those in favor, uh, please uh, raise your hands. Ms. Solomons. Um, yes, G. Um, those in favor for Houting, Honorable Dango, for Eastern Cape, Honorable High, for Northern Cape, Honorable Mwemang, for Free State, Honorable Mashuri, for Northwest, Honorable Lansman, and for Limpopo, Honorable Mamarahani. Thank you so much. Can we please lower our hands, Honorable Members. Thank you. Those voting against, 
voting against you. We have four four hundred four Western Cape Honorable Lund. Thank you so much. Uh, if you can please uh, lower your hand, Honorable Lund. Uh, those are abstaining. Please raise your hands. Those who are abstaining. Thank you. Um, thanks, Chi. Um, and for uh, abstaining for um, for Malanga, we have Honorable Bashov, and for KZN, we've got Honorable Pratisir. Thank you so much. Please lower your hands, Honorable Members. Honorable Members, we now vote for uh, on Clause 6. Those in favor of adopting Clause 6, please raise your hand. Chi, may I proceed, Chi? Uh, yes, please. Yes, Chi. Um, those provinces that have voted in, in favor of Clause 6 would be proposed amendments are as follows. Um, Hauking, Northern Cape, Eastern Cape, Free State, Limpopo, and Northwest. Thank you so much. Please, uh, honorable members, lower your hands. Those voting against, Please uh, raise your hand. Gee, <clears throat> voting against, we have the Western Cape. Okay. Those who are abstaining, please uh, raise your hand. Thank you. Gee, thanks, Chi. Um, abstaining, we have Mpumalanga and KZN. Okay. Thank you so much. Um, please raise, uh, lower your hand, uh, Honorable. Uh, uh, Mr. Bazia, can you move up, please? Um, advocate on matters dealt in the copy. Thank you, Chief. <laughs> See, what, what we have presented up to now are the, are the last proposals to this specific bill, to the clauses in this bill. So there's still clauses 7 to 11 for the committee to vote on. But what remains is uh, matters that have already, it's, it's related to the copyright amendment bill. For instance, uh, relating to collecting societies, which is dealt with in copyright. Um, in relation to digital rights, that's in the Copyright Amendment Bill. Uh, section 6A is a Copyright Amendment um, Bill section, the same with 8A and 12A, 12A to D, 22A. So all of these um, that are listed here are actually are, are matters that found their way into performance protection mandates, but they relate to the Copyright Amendment Bill, and they were, in fact, dealt with there. Um, and then Chair, the, the remainder would be new matters. Um, so I don't know if the same decision will be taken in respect of that as was taken in the Copyright Amendment Bill, um, where the committee decided not to consider new matters now. Um, so then yeah. what remains, Chair, is just voting on Clauses 7 to 11, where there were no proposals for amendments. Chair, let's agree with the legal advice on that matter. Okay, um, I'm, I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to, to check, uh, uh, to, to, to understand actually. And our matters dealt with in the Copyrights uh, Amendment B, um, all collecting society must first say that, uh, that's free state and uh, so on. And then the, the, on the response side, it says no amendments to the performance projects in amendment bill required must be dealt with in the copyright amendment bill. So are you, say, are you saying that we, we vote on that, on all of them, uh, where you say no amendments, no amendments? It is, it, uh, it, I'm not sure that it is necessary to vote on these, Chair, because they're not in respect of the correct bill. So so they I think they oh. incorrectly found their way into the performance protection uh, mandates, but they don't relate to this bill at all. So they're similar to the new matters, not currently in the bill. Yes, so they're not in this bill. Yeah, and but but what I can say to the committee is that they were dealt with when we did when we did the copyright amendment bill. We, they were duplicated um, oh, in, okay. in, in both. Yeah. Um, a motive. Okay. All right. Uh, yeah. 
the previous uh, clause, did we vote for it? Yeah. Um, yes, she we voted on clause seven. Now we need to go to clause. Um, we voted on clause six. My apologies. Now we need to vote on clause seven. Clause oh. seven through to clauses eleven, and then obviously 11. the cover page. Yeah, so oh. seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and then the cover page. She. Okay, thank you so much. So the next one is clause seven. Honourable members, those uh, who adopt uh, clause seven. Please uh, raise your hands in support of clause seven. Is it up to 11, Chair? Yes, up to 11, but one by one, yes. Uh, yes, Chief, may I proceed? Yes, please. Okay, um, three of those um, provinces that have um, voted in support of Clause 7 without amendments are as follows. Gauteng, Free State, Eastern Cape, Limpopo, Northwest, and Northern Cape. Thank you so much. Can we please lower our hands, honorable members? Honorable Mamarakhane, honorable Mosodi, please uh, lower your hand. Thank you so much. Those who vote against adoption of uh, clause 7, please uh, raise your hand. Achieve voting against, we have to be kept. Thank you so much. Lund, if you can lower your hand, please. If you may lower your hand, please. Those who are abstaining, please uh, raise your hands. Over to you, uh, Ms. Solomon. Yes, Tri. Um, for um, abstaining, we have Pumalanga, KZN, and we note the abstention of Honorable Matabula. Thank you so much. Can lower your hand there, Honorable Matabula? Thank you so much. We now move to Clause 8. Those in favor of adopting uh, Clause 8. Please uh, raise your hand. Adoption of clause eight. Uh, Ms. Solomon. Thank you, Chief. Um, those provinces that have voted in, in favor of clause eight without amendments are as follows. The state, Eastern Cape, Limpopo, Gauteng, Northwest, and Northern Cape. Okay. Please uh, lower your hand, honorable members. Uh, Mr. Bazia, can you please, in the meantime, take off this one and put uh, the bill itself? Uh, <laughs> remind me, um, we just finished those were yeah. in favor. In favor. Now we need to go to those against clause oh, eight. Okay. Oh, those who are against, uh, oh, those who vote against uh, clause uh, eight, please uh, raise your hands. Voting against clause eight, we have the Western Cape. Thank you. Those who are abstaining, please uh, raise your hand. Honorable uh, Lund, if you can lower your hand, please. Those who are abstaining. Okay. Um, thank you, Chi. Um, abstaining, we have, we've, uh, we've captured um, Pumalanga and KwaZulu Natal, and we note the abstention of Honorable Matabula. Okay. Please lower your hand, Honorable Members. Honorable um, Tessé. Uh, we go to Clause 9. Those in favor of adopting Clause 9, please uh, raise your hand. Favor of uh, adopting clause nine. Please raise your hand. Yes, my dear. Um, yes, she. Those provinces that have voted in favor of clause nine without amendments are as follows: Northwest, Eastern Cape, Gauteng, Free State, Northern Cape, and Limpopo. Thank you so much. Please lower your hands, honorable members. Uh, 
those who are voting against uh, adoption of clause nine, please raise your hand. Chief, voting against, we have the Western Cape. Thank you so much. The abstaining, please raise your hand. Those abstaining, please raise your hands. Thank you. Thanks, Chief. Um, abstentions, we have abstentions from Pumalanga, KZN, and we know the abstention of Honorable Matavula. Thank you so much. Please lower your hands for number of members. Honorable Matula. Thank you. We go to clause uh, 10, correct? Equally true. Okay, those in favor of uh, adoption of the uh, clause 10, please uh, raise your hands. Ms. Madia. Yes, G. Um, um, voting in favor of clause 10 without amendments are as follows Gauteng, Mpopo, Free State, Eastern Cape, Northwest, and Northern Cape. Thank you so much. Please lower your hands, uh, honorable members. Thank you. Those who vote against the adoption of uh, clause 10, please raise your hand. Okay, we have one again, one province against is the Western Cape. Thank you so much. Honorable Lund, if you can lower your hand, please. Those uh, abstaining, please uh, raise your hands. Those who are abstaining, please raise your hand. Okay. Uh, Chief, the abstentions are as follows. Pumalanga, um, KZN, and we know the abstention of Honorable Matabola. Thank you so much. Honorable Matula, please uh, lower your hand. The last clause, uh, clause 11, those in favor of adoption of uh, clause 11, please uh, raise your hand. Um. Honorable Lanzmann on the platform. Honorable Lanzmann. Yeah, yes, sir. Yes, okay. Chair. Um, thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chair. And um, may I proceed, Chair? Yes, please. Okay, Chair, those provinces that have voted in favor of Clause 11 without amendments are as follows Eastern Cape, Gauteng, Northern Cape, Free State. Sorry, my apologies. I'm sorry, I'm over. Um, those provinces that have voted in favor of Clause 11 without amendments are as follows Eastern Cape, Gauteng, Northern Cape, Free, Free State. Limpopo and Northwest. Okay. Thank you so much. Can we please lower our hands, honorable members? Those who vote against the uh, adoption of uh, Clause 11. Chief, there is one day. from, yes, Chief, thank you. There is one from the Western Cape. Okay, those abstaining. Please raise your hands. Thank you. Chief, the abstentions have been um, recorded as follows. Um, Pumalanga, KZN, and we know the abstention of Honorable Matabula. Thank you so much. Uh, please lower your hand, Honorable members. And then we go to the cover page. Correct? Correct, Chief. Those who vote in favor of uh, adoption or uh, acceptance of uh, uh, the cover page, please raise your hand. Um, so okay. um, thank you, Chi. Um, those provinces that have voted in um, in in favor of the, the cover page are as follows. Um, Northwest, Eastern Cape, Gauteng, Northern Cape, Free State, and Popo. 
Thank you so much. Our members, please uh, lower your hands. Thank you so much. Those uh, voting against the acceptance of uh, the cover page. Um, Chief, we have, thank you, Chief. We have one, the Western Cape. Thank you so much. Those who are abstaining, please raise your hands. Those who are abstaining, please raise your hands. Okay. Okay, thank you, Chair. Abstentions have been reported as follows. Um, Pumalanga, KZN, and we note the abstention of Honorable Matabula. Thank you so much. Please uh, lower your hand, honorable members. Yeah, thank you very much. I think we, we've dealt with the two bills, uh, honorable members. Um, earlier on, then we discuss the issue of uh, the minutes. Um, I don't know, uh, Ms. Madia can indicate if uh, they've been circulated. I understand that uh, honorable members also wanted uh, some time to consider them. Um, uh, the Chairperson, uh, maybe yes. we can flight them, if we can flight them page by page and then agree them or disagree them. What is the view of other members? Okay, person, we, we were busy here now, so I do hope that we'll get an opportunity to actually go through it and also taking into consideration the um, feedback that we got, that there were some errors now obviously made in, or appear to be some errors made in the voting previously. So uh, um, nothing prevents us. We'll get this minutes from today at the next meeting as well. Um, and then we can all handle it together. So I suggest that we, we, we get them circulated first and then we consider them at a later date. Is that, is that what you're yeah, saying? Yes, yes, Jay, that's the proposal. Okay. And you get the views uh, of our members that we get them situated and consider them and, uh, and then consider them at a future date. Chairperson, if I may, um, I support that. I think given the, the importance of the votes and the importance that we do this correctly, I, I would support that. Thank you. Okay. Other views? Honourable members, so oh, Honourable Moy Mang, then Honourable uh, Matibula. So, person, I think uh, uh, I don't think uh, the ambassador will have any uh, challenge with that. Uh, that we go through the the minutes because they are only circulated today, so we have an opportunity to go through the minutes and adopt them in the next meeting. Thank you, Chair. <laughs> Uh, Honorable Matevula, followed by Honorable Osho. Thank you very much, uh, Chairperson. I support as well that we must get the minutes and go through it, and then uh, we we discuss it in the next meeting. Thank you, Chair. Thank you so much. Uh, Honorable uh, Osho. Thank you very much, Chair. I support Honorable Lawrence's um, proposal. Thank you. Thank you so much. Honorable members, there was earlier a proposal of a Friday. Is there any other date uh, that uh, we in mind so that, because this week is the last week and uh, that means uh, if there is any date, it will be during the constituency period and we have to then also make application for that. Is there any other date that will be before the 25th? Because on the 25th, we'll be considering the e-list. In terms of the legislative program. Honorable Matebla and the uh, Honorable Dam and the uh, Honorable Mark. Honorable, uh, oh, she dropped there. Honorable Dango? Yeah, Chairperson, 
I think uh, on Friday, Grace has sent through a message that on Friday mm. morning she would like to deal with that other matter of the international uh, tour. Mm, yes. uh, if we don't do so, the, uh, if we don't do that on Friday, uh, I think the fact that the, 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 if we're going to get visas is going to then become a challenge. So I think bear that in mind. Also okay. bear in mind what, what is the legislative program that we need to deal with. And uh, if we need to come back, we will be away during the recess in any case, uh, was when are we going to come back? To, to, to can deal I, with I, what, what is the legislative program? Thank you. Okay. Can I suggest, honorable members, that you perhaps on the WhatsApp group, we circulate maybe three, day, three dates uh, to choose from? Um, and then uh, if a number of people are confirming there may be a common date out of the three, and then we, we, we then make an application. We confirm that date to members, and then we, we, we also make application to the house chairperson and the chief. Can, can we, what's your view on that, uh, honorable members? Uh, my mom? The, 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 okay. Thank you, Chair. Chair, the <clears throat> I, 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 I'm also on the on on the on the same uh, of the same view that Honorable Dango has uh, has outlined. Let's 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 deal with the, the visa matter on Friday, yes. and uh, then uh, uh, take into consideration issues that were also raised uh, at the beginning of the meeting around other. Uh, a member's concern. Let's follow the let's follow uh, uh, the, the, the 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 programs of the committee. If in terms of the committee, we had anticipated that we'll deal with the matter in the in the third term. Let's then deal with that, so that we must not create any other loophole again to find ourselves with our back against the wall. Thank you, Chair. No, I just wanted to check whether. We said we agreed that we'll have another meeting to consider the minutes, but I then I raised the point that uh, this is the last week, but also Friday already uh, we can't have a meeting on Friday because of uh, these uh, visa processes. Uh, so it means therefore we'll have to get another date before the date of the 25th uh, that will be considering the, 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 the east. And therefore suggesting that perhaps uh, we will circulate maybe three dates uh, which will be after the, the trip uh, for members to consider. I just wanted to, if uh, there's a buy-in on, on that suggestion. I'm with you on that, Chair. Okay. Any comment review? Okay. Any contra review? Okay. I think then we, we all agree uh, that we will circulate a date uh, for the adoption of minutes. Um, and then we, we reflect uh, on, the, on the bill itself, the, the two bills that we dealt with, if there were any uh, mistakes uh, that were done before we consider the list. Thank you so much, honorable members. Anything, uh, Ms. Solomon? Yes. Uh, okay, but uh, she, like you said, we will um, we will be discussion in the meeting chat in, in terms of our next meeting. But in terms of our next approved meeting, um, as you indicated, it is on the twenty fifth of July um, during recess, and it is virtual. Okay. So, honourable mm -hmm. members, will take the opportunity because we have not been able to adopt any minutes because of. Uh, the time constraints we will use that meeting to also adopt other meetings because most of them are also related to this legislative process, uh, except the the APPs that we had with the. I think it will only be those uh, APP minutes that relate to the APPs of the departments that we met with, and the the rest will, will be minutes that are related to the bills uh, that uh, we will be dealing with. Um, if there is nothing else, uh, honorable members uh, from your side, if any comments um, from anyone, uh, members, uh, uh, advocate, DDG? Thank you, Chair. 
for chairing the meeting. Very professional and good. Much appreciated. Thank you so much. Uh, any chairperson, I think we should also, also to thank the staff who <clears throat> who's been very vigilant and who've been working very hard on these matters. Thank you very much. All right. Let, I was just getting comments from DDG, uh, also from uh, uh, Advocate Fanamilbe and Advocate uh, Samara Al. Thank, thank you, Chair and Honourable Members. Uh, from the DTIC side, it's just to say thank you for the opportunity to be part of this process um, and also for the uh, for the proceedings and all the discussions that uh, took place up to up to this point, uh, just to note the processes and to say thank you on behalf of the minister, the deputy ministers, and the colleagues who are involved in this process. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Advocate uh, Fanamewe. Thank you, Chair. There's nothing from my side, perhaps just to say I hope you guys enjoy your trip and that it is very successful. Thank you. Thank you so much. Advocate Samara. Thank you, Chair. Nothing from my side. Okay, thank you so much. And I'll remember the, if there are no comments from your side, let me take this opportunity to thank you for uh, attending this meeting. Uh, it was also a learning curve. Uh, um, we also thank uh, the committee staff uh, uh, for all the assistance uh, they were giving. Uh, to us as members. We know we still continue with the process. We have not uh, concluded it yet, uh, but we also thank you very much. We thank the uh, uh, Advocate Van Melvia, uh, Advocate Shamar, and also thank the department, uh, the DG and the team, um, the staff of parliament, uh, our stakeholders uh, who've been uh, making submissions. We also thank uh, our honorable members uh, from the provinces in part of uh, this process. Uh, we thank you very much, uh, 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 MPLs, uh, and also the staff of the legislatures uh, who are with us, and uh, also the PLOs uh, of the NCOP. We thank you very much uh, uh, for your uh, continued uh, uh, support. Thank you so much. When I remember, say, if there's nothing else, I would uh, uh, attend the meeting. Uh, thank you very much. The meeting is attended. Thank you. And, uh, goodbye. Recording Bye -bye. stopped. Bye-bye. <laughs>